And uh, I'll, uh, no, you can start it off. Welcome to the finals of the men's ICC World Team Championships from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at Fairlanes. Paul Grant, Greg Gouillard, Dan Castle on Candlepin Bowling Network. It's two number one seeds, Fenway Academy. Look, their third time might be a charm. They're 0-2 in the finals against the Canadian teams on the road. They're taking on A-plus accounting. They're going for their fifth world championship, led by Matt Harnett, the anchor bowler. And what a match they had last time. They carried it pretty much all the way against Kingswood Bulletproof. They're flipping coins to see which side they go on. Welcome, Mr. Greg Gouillar. Thanks so much. Let's get the scoreboard fixed. Everything's done on the fly here on Candlepin Bowling Network. Proud of our resourcefulness for certain, and what a pleasure it is to bring this. The finals, a culmination of 11 round-robin matches and f three prior rounds of playoffs, this being the fourth and final one. You can go with the lineup if you'd like to, please, if you have a chance. Will do. Fenway lineup is Cole Fry, Jason Doucette, Brian Kroll, Tim Jalbert, and Chris Merrill. And for A-plus accounting, Nate LeBlanc, uh, Blake Doucette, Matt McPhee, Jerry Dunn, and Matt Harnett. Yeah, what a nice benefit they have. They have Evan Rive on the bench. Jay Simino, two excellent bowlers, outstanding bowlers. Not a bad bench to have, and Joe Smith as well. Looks like we're going to get Fenway Academy on the left side, that being determined by a coin toss. And Cole Fry, one of the best young bowlers coming up from Maine. He's a 120 league bowler, 122 his best year. He's got a high single of 199, high triple 464, and a high five of 729. He'll be leading off the Fenway Academy. The number one seed from the left side, the right side, A-plus accounting. On lanes 13 and 14. The finals about to begin. Three-string total format is all that matters. No points. If we tie up to three, a one-string roll-off until somebody wins. Underway on lane 14, one, two, seven. For Nate LeBlanc. Three for Fry. Just missed. Fry, tough leave, good bid. Six right, four left. Underway here, the finals from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at Fairlanes. Nine for Nate, eight for Cole in the field goal. One pin early lead. On the off chance you're watching Candlepin Bowling for the very first time, a very special welcome to you here to this very special match. It scores just like big ball bowling, but you get a third small ball to pick up the tenth and remaining pins. You still get strikes and spares on the previous balls, and any wood that falls on the plate stays on the plate and can be used as live wood. Nice shot, nine. Ten pin left up. Cole Fry wobbling ten right corner, one, three, five, middle. Missed it. LeBlanc cannot convert. Cole Fry inside number one in the 10. Cole Fry from Bangor, Maine, originally Brewer, Maine, next door to Bangor, home of Bangor Brewer Lanes in Brewer, Maine, home of next year's World Championships. So mark your calendars, November 4th to the 9th, 2024, the Men's Worlds Team Tournament on Kenneth Moore Network. Hopefully, we'll have coverage for you live there also. Both balls are nine. 17 for Cole, 18 for Nate. We'll give you a look at the full scoreboard real quick as Blake Doucette. Uh, no, that's not. Uh, yes, that's right. Aha! I see the problem I've made. We've got a Jason, a Blake Doucette. We can differentiate that. We can't differentiate the shades of navy, but we can do that. Well, the real Doucette, please stand up. Pocket shot, six. That's a check mark. Five left, five right, rather. Two, four, seven left. On the same arm as the foot, Doucette delivers six, make it five, one, four, seven, nine, ten. I haven't seen many of that. Uh, Ryan Cox does that. That's right. Ashley Breton does that on the list of ladies. Mm -hmm. Oh, he got it, spare, unchecked it. Ten of the ball, he had a 168 in the semifinals. Good head pin hit there for Doucette, four, seven, ten. Jason Doucette had a lot of Jason Doucette had a lot of great finishes on New England candle pins. Uh, 
show that airs out of Ryan Family Amusements, Millis, Massachusetts. You can catch those on the Ryan's Millis oh, channel. Pretty 10 there, yeah. sweeping 10 to start his match. Yes, 4 7 10. Dan Cass will call the middle string. I'll be back for the third string as well. Nothing like the great game of Kenneth and Bowling. Get the word out, folks. Blake Doucette, Spread Eagle, 14 through 1. His team's up five early in the first of three strings in this final match. Doucette on the head pin. He breaks up the right side, wiggling two right, four left. Chance of go get it, go get it. Did you hear those folks? I'm just curious how the audio is picking up. A little bit. Thank you. That helps. A little quiet right now. Doucette missed left. Leads up the two. Sure, right before the shot. But if those pins fly, you're going to hear voices cry out. Blake Doucette, three right, two, four, seven left. Looking to get at least three here. Ten's a bonus. And he gets three for a nine. 23 through two. And Jason Doucette, 10, 20 through two. The other Jason Doucette just bought our last Kendall Pitts for Cancer hat earlier today. $10 each hat goes to Kennel Pitts for Cancer. A ball is 501c3 charity. Plus the wow shirts available here while I'm here to today and everywhere I stream live. You can ship anywhere in the U.S. My catchphrase, the wow shirts, to help support Kennel Pitts for Cancer. A bowl is 501c3 charity. Almost 700 shirts sold. We'll be helping a 14th family soon. A bowl or a relative going through cancer treatments. Head pin hit, spread eagle for Matt McPhee. And veteran bowler Brian Kroll had a 143 last round. In the first string, wiggle on the seven for a strike. This guy is so accurate on the head pin, pinging to death. Oh, what a try! Ooh. One percent chance to convert for that wood. Stats by Kenneth Bowling Network for Class A bowlers. The three and two split conversion was impressive. Pro gets the ball to go with the wood off the wall into the seven spare. Not convincing Wood, but it went. A mark is a mark is a mark for Brian. Ten for McPhee. One mark to none for Brian Kroll. Fenway Academy. Academy Lance last year. Could it be another Academy Award this year? Ah. Second box, first string from Moncton. You gotta be kidding me. Two for two on spread eagles. Yikes. Can be a cruel game sometimes. Kroll, spread eagle to match. That's on a spare. 14 beats a 10, 14 through one. We're dead even right now, 51-51. Again, so accurate, too full sometimes. Object pin, look at that. Two object hits, nothing to show for it. Five standing. Ryan, object pin for him, opposite side, look at that. Talk about even Steven, five and five, 51 and 51. One mark apiece, three pence left standing. There you go. Seven box, 17 through two. Kroll, a rare six. 20 through two the hard way, spare four, six. Plenty of time to go, but those pins on the third ball could make the difference between victory and defeat. One pin lead early on for A-plus accounting, gunning for their fifth title. Family trying to crack it for the first time in three tries. They're certainly fundamental to success. You can't pin, you can't win. Not on this stage, you can't. Jerry down in the fourth spot at 214 recently. Strike to start the finals! Tim Jalbert, Whoops. eight, one of the 10. Tim from Haverhill, Massachusetts, 121 league ball, the 123, his best season ending average. Good bit on the object, won't carry to the 10. High single of 183, high triple 465, high five 721. Out of Academy Lanes, Pub 125, Haverhill, Massachusetts. He gets a 10, and that's a great bar restaurant. Pub 125, they had the world title championship last year, Academy Lanes. A great place to eat there and hang out. Pub 125 Academy Lanes in the Bradford section of Haverhill, Mass. Great ownership in the DeBurro family, Ted, Josh, and Ernie. 
That's a huge 44 lane house. Hopefully I get the names right. I get, them, I get all the names mixed up sometimes. Bear Lane's here in Moncton, New Brunswick, a big house in its own right, 36 of them. Been using 24 all week long. For double, that close. Woods coming back to the five. It goes, bang, double strike, wow. 30 plus bonus balls. Jabba in the pocket, seven, two, nine, 10. Wood to help. A rare event, that double strike, it may easily not happen again, although with this caliber of bowlers, and the way these pins fly here in Moncton, I wouldn't count that out. What a try. Not much to show for it, the nine and the 10. Family always in the running every year. If the wood to stop by Candle from bowling rules before you release the ball, now it goes into the channel. Nope, now it's, it stays put. Just have the roll. He gets a nine. 19 through two. Great bowler and Tim Jalma at Bolster Academy 2 in the Friday Night Pro League. Every Friday night during the regular bowl uh -oh. season, 35 weeks plus the playoffs, 7.30 on Facebook and on YouTube later on on the rebroadcast. Friday Night Pro League Game of the Week on Canopin Bowling Network. Anchor bowl is Chris Merrill on the left. Matt Harnett on the right. Harnett delivers eight, four in the 10. Chris Merrill at a 160 last match. Four horsemen plus the nine, 10. He's a great bowler from Lewiston, Maine. Harnett can't get to the 10. Merrill, good bid on the head pin, 4 7 10. Chris, a 125 league bowler, our stars and strikes in South Paris, Maine. Rest Neely, Junior's House with Jody Neely. Fantastic owners and great people. Harnett, 10 through 1. Merrill, 9 through 1. Harnett pinned that split out well. He's, he'd been making a bunch of fantastic wood shots in the last match we saw here on Candlepin Bowling Network. You can watch all our previous coverage uh, most easily on our YouTube page, I would say. They are on Facebook as well, but I recommend YouTube for the best uh, viewing experience Plus overall. Plus, it's in high definition as well on YouTube. Mm -hmm. and it's always free, never a charge. Can't open Bowling Network on YouTube. Good audience out there wherever you may be and wh whatever platform you may be watching on. Merrill, strike bid nine. That looked good. Ten pin left up. Oh, and he said the S word. Not this time. Matt, 3 6 10 right, 4 to left, trying to kick it over. Got the object, getting a kick off the wall. 4 on the 10. Merrill, right on, it's fair. 19 of the ball through 2. Merrill from Maine. Smooth as you like. Two time Easter Classic Championship winner, 2021 2022. Go Tornado, Tim Douglas won it last year. Of a Calvin Lock and a thriller right down to the stretch. Available on Kenneth from Bowling Network on YouTube. Greg Ouya, the 20 stringer again. Two years in a row. Great job, Greg. Eight yep. for LeBlanc. Can't take a box uh, off. Harnett, but 18 through two now. LeBlanc up. Can't take Eight a five. box off there, but it's the pleasure to grind. Uh, two marks to one in effect because of that double strike from Jerry Dunn. The perfect pair to start. Cole Fry now on the right side. This guy's future is bright. Fierce competitor. Very good bowler. 2-6-10. Polar switch sides now. I've yep. put some little switcher arrows since the short colors are similar. Let's see if that helps uh, our folks out there track teams. Of course, big Fenway Academy letters. Oh, Fry, what a try. Hard to miss on the back of the shirts. And how Fry missed that 10 pin is beyond me. LeBlanc third ball open. That's a 10 box for Fry. And an eight box for people LeBlanc. Pick, people pick up a lot of wow shirts here this week, Greg. It's helping Candle Fits for Cancer. It's greatly appreciated. Every dollar helps. Ten dollars for each shirt goes to the charity. Fry nails the pocket on the crossover. Ends up with a 3-6 spare chance. Strike bid. Yes! Nate LeBlanc. 36 plus two through four. Fry for a spare. Yes. 
37 of the ball through four in the first of three from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at Fairlanes. The 2023 Men's ICC World Championship Finals on Camelton Bowling Network. This time I might be able to avoid jumping into the well to score check, but thanks to all the bowlers who've let me sidle in there, it's a lot of energy and focus in the wells. You can feel the energy bearing into the backs of the bowlers. In support, of course. Jason Doucette, 6 9 10 triangle. Blake Doucette, the other Doucette. 1 3 6 4 7 left. Unrelated Doucette. Good try, and the object won't get to the nine. Nothing wrong with that shot. He's frustrated, slaps his side. Those thin, pesky pins. Just missed right. Almost the way. Pin it goes. Illegal block in the back. <laughs> Throw the flag. <laughs> and the other Doucette, Jason Doucette, gets a 10. Yeah, they're, they're doing the ironic cheers. They're like, yeah, we're the best. They know what happened. They're not dumb. 30 through three for Jason Doucette. Blake Doucette. 33 in a ball through three they'll, in the first of three. They'll take a moment to jokingly rub it in anyway. <laughs> 4 7 10. For JD. Blake on the bonus. Head pin hit. Six. Seven, maybe. Seven it is. Two left. Six, 10 right. 40 through three. Championship match. Try and kick it over. Give it a ride. 7-10 goal post. Not even the 10. Harsh. Great job. The staff here at Fairlane's Bowling Center all week just over the mm. top accommodating. Mm. Outstanding, classy people. Tough leave. One of the two. Good try. Jason sends the violo, violin bow across the lanes right behind the seven for a nine box. Ah, what a way to lose the pin perfect string. Three tens and nine, not bad. And the nines and tens are usually DeMarks. 39 through four, nine for Blake Doucette, 49 through four, 16 pin lead for A-plus accounting. They've got a double strike and a spare to two spares to Fenway Academy. And you want to see a smooth, classy bowler. This guy has so much tough luck. On his lot of splits, Brian Kroll, just fun to watch, fundamentally sound. 58 year older, still has it. And look at see what I'm talking about? Case in point, five, seven, ten, but two including his, to work with. Including as far back on the channel five show with Don Gillis in Mass out of Massachusetts. Strike. <laughs> that McPhee had two spread eagles, the two frames prior. Good way to get it started. No splitting hit that time. Strike. Twenty seven plus two through three. Kroll for a spare at the wood. He got it! He's perfect, 30 the ball through three. Bit. From Stowe, Massachusetts, family owned the old Crow Bowl. He destroyed my Salem, Massachusetts, Salem, Massachusetts Travel League one time. High single 196, high triple 478 out of Academy Lanes, Pub 125, Haverhill, Mass. <coughs> On the bonus, check mark. 247 left, five to the right, 36 through three. McPhee on a strike. Four seven, left, five middle, ten right. Crawl for another spear. Looks good. He's got it. He's got two in a row. 46 in the ball through four in the first of three. After the spare four and six box, basically crunched it into two tens. Optic Getting wood. it started. Sorry, Greg. Object hit eight. On the wood, 35 through three for Mr. McPhee. He'll take a nine. Four's a while, 44 through four for Matt McPhee for A plus accounting. Those dots on your screen, those yellow dots indicate uh, marks up and that green dot up indicates a double strike. Say, here it is. Big moment in the match. Uh, Next ball is the big one for Jerry. Tim Jalba, 19 through two, one and the 10. Not easy, but makeable. Jerry's going for the turkey. We saw one earlier today, a triple strike. 
Is Blake Doucette? Yes. And that 168 strength in that first. So close. Two in the seven. 28 through one, 38 in the ball through two. Job done as good as reasonably possible. So we'll put eight in the first one, having counted the previous 10. Jalbert with the wood, missed the object pin, the 10 goals. He knew it was gettable. Object pin misses are frequent. You don't get a big surface area. No oil pattern, no strings, no mercy. For a spear and double strike, yes. 48 through three, 58 through two rather. 48 through two, 58 the ball through three, the power of the double strike. And job at a 10, pinning really well, 29 through three. 35 pin lead for A-plus accounting in the first of three strings on Canopin Bowling Network. Family Academy up three marks to two. You can see the yellow markers on your screen under the total. And that's the bowlers in the position. They're on marks. So yeah. Done. Back in the head pin. A 5-1 split. That's on a spare. 60. That's a four, Phil. 62 through three. Jalba crossing over nine, two pin for a spare. If he kept getting 20 a box, he'd be at 200. And we already saw a 206 earlier, which is extraordinary. He had 214 in Canada here recently. That's right. Tough leave. Object pin, two full. Oof. Jalbert. Shots like that are why 200 is so elusive. Down here, that spare, 962. Another spare, he's got four in a row. 72 and a ball through four, wow. Albert grabs two for an eight, 37 through four. Anchor ball is Chris Merrill, 19 of the ball on the right. Matt Harnett, 18 through two on the left. 219, 178, 41 pin lead for A-plus accounting. Three marks to two for Fenway Academy. Merrill, half Worcester. That's on a fill, 21 through two. Now the marks are even, two apiece. 39 pin lead for A-plus. Arnett, 6 9 10. Merrill, 1 4, 6 10 right side. Pat crossing over, 3 right, 5 left. Merrill, a 7. 28 through 3 with the mark. Didn't get the follow up on the spare. Half whisters are brutal. Matt Harnett gains 3 with a 10, 28 through 3. Sure, you missed the head pin, but didn't get the splash either. 42 pin lead for A-plus accounting. Two number one seeds, head to head, side by side. One from the US, one from Canada. Merrill in the pocket, seven, maybe eight, maybe nine, maybe 10. Wood in between the two and the four. Harnett for a strike, eight, that looked good. Seven, 10 goal pulls, Wood rolling around. For a spare. He will get it. He'll take it. Missed the object pin. It came back. Turnabout's fair play. Take it while you can. 38 in the ball through four for Chris Merrill. Even the spares are rare. They're big moments. Harnett pushes through. Spare. 38 in the ball through four here in the first of three. And back to the top of the order. The update from Greg Gouillard. Back to the old tricks with the live wood. Here's the scoreboard. 239 to 197. Mark situation is currently nine marks to five. Combination of spares and strikes for A plus accounting. Pinning, uh, A plus accounting has, A plus accounting has left three fewer pins on the plate, so therefore the pinning advantages them by three. Three in their favor. Paul Grant, Craig Gouillard, Dan Castle on Canop and Bowling Network. The men's ICC 2023 World Team Championship Finals. Another spread eagle. And the victim this time is Nat, uh, Matt LeBlanc. He's on a strike, though. Cole Fry's on a spare. He goes full, but he breaks up the right side. Two, four, seven, spare chance. Seven of the bonus, 44 through four. Chops out the four. That's five on the strike for Nate, 41 through four. Fry missed the object pin, the two. 199 high single. Just 22 years young, and a rare six. Look at that leaf. Take a picture of that one. 47 half, 
Fry gains three more, four more actually with a 10, 54 half. Little things can make a big difference down the line. Every pin counts. We've seen teams lose in the past by one pin to get into the playoffs. 36 pin lead for A plus, two marks apiece. A post. Yeah. Dunn is at 77. How did I miss that? Well, the fill is nine. The fill is nine. Yep. I think I said it wrong. That's why my fault. There we go. 77 through four, and that should now be correct. Okay. Dang it. I always get the double I think I, I, think I called it wrong. My fault. Good bid. The object won't carry. Got the one, two. Left up the four, seven, ten. Call five. Look at the seven for a spare. And he got it. Confident young bowler. Gets it again. 64 and a ball through six. He's fun to watch, isn't he? It'll be his home lanes next year, the World Tournament Finals next year, November 4th to 9th. Eight for LeBlanc, 60, is it 57 through six or 65? Uh, 55, Fif that's it. 55 through six. Conway Kettiff making some noise. Three marks to two down, 39. Thank you folks for letting us know. We'll. All scores are unofficial. We strive for accuracy, but are unofficial until announced otherwise. But at this point, everything is now correct. One, seven, goes away. Head pin for Julian Strike, almost. The Julians from the head pins last to fall, made famous here in Canada by Jay Julian. They stuck. There's a clean strike for Jason Doucette. Forty-nine plus two through five. Ooh. Blake set misses number one. And this goes about 59% of the time when you miss the head pin and all the other nine go down on the first ball and convert it without wood for Pro Bowl. stats by Kenneth Bowling Network. And that is a Paul Grant special. Missed the second shot completely, making the third. Never a good time for that, is it, Greg? Uh, no. 59 half. Four marks to two now. Here comes Fenway Academy. Blake crossing over off the wall, check mark plus the seven. Five middle, three, six, ten right, seven left. Ooh. Strike bid, nine, almost a double. Whoa. That would have been a nice response to Dunn. Jerry with two strikes and two spares, 77 through four. Object pin a little thin. Wobbling five and seven. For a spare and strike, he has it. 59 through five, 69 of the ball through six for Jason Doucette to the Fenway Academy. Spare on strike. Blake Doucette on lane 14 and nine, 68 through six on Canlepin Bowling Network. Your home for all things Canlepin Bowling, semi-pro to pro action, never a charge, always free. Get your friends and family to sign up to Canlepin Bowling Network on YouTube. Like and follow us on Facebook as well. Greg. That sounded good to me. Mark situation here is? Uh, Mark situation is nine to nine. Pinning is within four. He's down to 28 for A+. Plus. But remember, uh, with that double strike on under Jerry Dunn's name, that's building an advantage for A+. Plus. Matt McPhee going for a strike. It's eight. Six right, nine left and back. Wood rolling into the channel, one in between. Rolling back with flat gutters. Brian Crow on a spare. Off to the right, gets six, seven. One five sent to Worcester, seven left. Flat gutters more frequent in Canada than the United States. 53 through four, not sanctioned by the ICBA. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I shouldn't go there. On quiet in Western Front. Spare with the wood. Matt McPhee, 54 half plus one. Wait a second, New Brunswick Southeast. <laughs> Brian, five, seven left up. I have to travel a little bit west from Fredericton to get here to Moncton. About a couple hours more than I'm used to even making that trap. The Women's World going on this weekend at Halifax, Nova Scotia as well. Good luck to the ladies. Even further west. Kroll, nine, object pin again. Nine box, 62 half. 22 pin lead, it's down to 22 for A plus. Three marks for each side. And the fourth ball is coming now. Not yet. I'm sorry, third ball is. Flip my sheets around. 
Brian Kroll in the third spot with Matt McPhee. Still have one box to go before I flip my sheets. 4-2 split. That's on a spare, 58 half. Brian Kroll just missed right. Not a bad leave, 179 with wood to help, possibly. It looks like four pieces from our angle way back here. New England Candlepins commentator Dave Chestercove likes this leave. It's pretty when it goes, the four and two groups. In the hole. Dave did very well for himself in the World Tournament here this week. Kroll, he got it! He'll take it, 72 to ball through six. Smile on his face, very stoic usually. Nice out, eight for McPhee, 66 through six, and the first of three from Old Canada at Fairlanes in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada on Canada Bowling Network. Four marks to two for Fenway, down 24 in the string. We started with three. 24 teams in this competition uh, with round robin play. They were awarding match points for winning games, or strings as we call them, and uh, matches. Uh, two for total, two for each string, eight match points in all. But here, it's just total pinfall wins. That's tracked at the top of your screen. Plus 24 for A+. Plus. Now the fourth ball is Jerry Dunn at it again. Eight, six right, seven left. 85 through four. What a start. Jalbert pounds the strike zone, but look at this. Are you oh, serious? Oh, boy. Wow. Parallel pins plus the 10. Four, seven left, five, eight middle, 10 right. Evan Ryan been giving advice how to play the shot. I would think he's going to go tip right of that wood, but who am I? I was just a regular 110 league bowler my best year with no practice once a week. Jerry for five in a row. No. Streaks over at mm. four. He's hoping no. to get another piece, piece of the other wood on the way through. Shelby missed the wood, trying to edge the right side of that wood the way I thought he would try to do it. That's what he was trying to do, I think. Four, seven left, five, ten. Dunn remains perfect with a 10, 95 half in the channel. A six for Jalbert, Tim, 43 half. Now, the, the substitution mm. policy, Greg, for our viewers. Substitutes can be made, and this is rare for uh, most Candlepin team events, but here you can substitute bowlers before the halfway mark of a game and not while on a mark on a spare strike. So Tim is staying in. He's a great bowler. Jerry Dunn, a 190 pace. He keeps it up. Chance to have another spare. 4 7. This should be a slam dunk. Jalbert back in the pocket. Strike! And that's for like Tim Jalbert. That's how you do it. After a 43 half, 53 plus 2 through 6. Done. Another spare. My 105 and a ball through 6. Masterpiece again by Jerry Dunn. Wait a second. No, it's, it's a, a ten. That's a ten. That's a ten ball. All right, I missed the ball. Sorry, we have to track the view here. I can't see through the trees here. So one hundred five through six officially the ten. My bad. No problem. We can't see the scoreboard back here. It's manually written, so it's hard to see. Also, Matt Harnett missed left one three six ten. Chris, there's on a spare forty four through four. Merrill on a spare. He gets six also. He's got the three six ten with wood in between the three and the nine and back. 44 through four for him also. Fours are wild for both bowlers. All five bowlers for Fenway on marks. Merrill trying to keep it going away, that way again. Harnett missed inside, as the one and 10. Merrill for another mark. He has it off the wall, the 10 goes. Five bowlers, all on marks for Fenway Academy, five to one. 54 out plus one, field goal for Harnett. 52 half, here comes Fenway Academy. Down 34, five marks to one. That's a rough ride to go through the post like this. That is a CFL team. Am I not making that up though? They can cut it into the single digits, potentially. Silly American. Harnett back in the pocket. Four, eight, nine, 10. Merrill gets a break, one in the wobbly nine on the spare, 62 half. They're down 26. Four marks to one, still in their favor. 12 marks to 10 overall in the match, so this is has a chance of tipping over to Fenway Academy or at least being close. There's a conference about that wood. We have to be discreet about how we discuss it, but looks like the right tip of the wood is the most likely part. For a spare. No. 
Ah, I see. Let's send the left hip and Merrill for through a score. the right. He has it. Five balls once again on Marks. Wow. Chris, right fire. Chris Merrill, four marks and six boxes. 72 to ball through six. Matt gets a nine. 61 through six on Kenneth from Bowling Network. Paul Grant, Dan Castle, Greg Guya. The World Finals, the ICC Men's Team Championships from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at Fairlanes. Update from Greg Guyar. Uh, current situation is uh, 13 marks to 10. How's the pinning looking here, Greg, too? Uh, pinning is uh, four in favor of Fenway Academy. Cole Fry's on a spare, 1 9 10, 71 through 6. Nate LeBlanc. Four has been left, one, two, four, seven. Five for another one. Missed the head pin that time. Ooh. One of the nine. Oh, sent it through. Way right. Goes the, LeBlanc. The biggest event in men's candle pin bowling. The Super Bowl of all Super Bowls, the men's world championships on Candle Pin Bowling Network. Fry and eight, 79 through seven in the first of three. Eight for Nate LeBlanc, 63 through seven. He's been great all week, but having a tough start. Let's give a team four, though. One goes down, one or two go up. Eighth box, first string. Fry just missed the pocket, not by much. One, three, six, ten. Four has been right. A plus up by 18, down four marks to one. Virtual tie right now. Academy has come storing back, Fenway Academy. One, two, nine, ten. Have I got Jerry score wrong the other way now? Sheesh. We'll double check the math in a second here. Fry raised the head pin. He's up for three, six, ten. We'll check the official scores in just a moment. These are unofficial. The U.S. at home. Missing left is Nate, one in the ten. Just not as sharp this string as he has been. That's Kenneth from Bowling, folks. Fry gets the 10, 89 through 8. LeBlanc on the head pin, 1 for 9, 72 through 8. Unofficially, a 17 pin lead for a, 17 pin lead for a plus accounting. And the non do set relatives on the lanes. The non relative do sets. The first non relative is Jason Doucette. He's on a spare, 69 to the ball through six on lane 14 here at Fairlands. Right hander, strike bid nine. Same spot for a spare. Wood coming back, let go, no. 78 through six. Leads down to eight for A plus. And three. Strike bid nine. Rolling back, strike, strike. For Blake to set, 78 plus two through seven. Spare. The other new set, Jason comes through. 78 through six, 88 the ball through seven. What a battle. Eight pin lead for eight plus accounting, four marks to two for Fenway. They have the virtual lead. It was in the 40s at one point, Greg, wasn't it? Just a moment, please. On the bonus, right side six, not bad. One, two, four, ten. 94 through seven. Blake going for a double, he had a triple earlier. Nine again. Has a 199 three times in his career for his high single. She said, object pin too thin. Jason Doucette, no mark that time. Blake Doucette, second ball on the strike on lane 13. Clean shot at the 10. He got it with the wood, he capped it, and gowned it into the 10. Spare on strike, 88 through eight, 98 in the ball. 88 through seven, 98 in the ball through eight. 402, 380. 
plus this finish from Doucette. Doucette is eight. So Jason Doucette, eight, 90, 102 rather, through eight. That's right. That's what I see on the board. Yeah, 102 through eight. 16 pin lead for A plus accounting. Three marks to two now with yep. Fenway Academy. So A plus has the virtual lead and the physical lead. Yeah. So. Brian Kroll, 72 in the ball. In the head pin of the crossover, six. Five, nine middle, seven, 10 post. 78 through six. Lead is 10. Make it 14. Should be eight now. As six net fell for Brian. So it's 10 pins, right? Eight, 10 or eight? It's one of those two. Eight pins, yeah, that's it. Eight it is. Point of the mark. He got it! Wood goes right in the seven. How about that? Three in a row? Back to back. Two, two in a row. Three out of four or something like that. It's got a bunch. 88 in the ball through seven. McPhee, good try there, got it all. How about that 10? That's a wild 10. Tens don't get enough love. 76 through seven. Brian Kroll looking for his first world championship in three tries. Always competitive in the tournaments. Beautiful shot, seven, eight. Eight in the 10, 96 through seven. Matt McPhee, three, six right. Now the four goes down. The pesky two pennants, Greg calls it, 51% pro success rate without wood for the Class A average bowler. Stats by Camp and Boy Network. Evan Ryder once again consulting Brian Kroll. A mound visit. No limit on those here. Front of the mark. No. They might go a little more inside in that wood. Spun McPhee it out. missed it. <laughs> Kroll gets one for nine, 99 through eight. McPhee, the Paul Grant special, missed the second, make the third, 86 through eight. Close battle. Seven pin lead, Bray plus accounting. <laughs> and Fanaway has an extra mark. I need to confirm Jerry Dunn's score, but this is a single digit match. We don't have instantaneous access to the score sheet. We'll have that for you in just a moment. Tim Jabba strike, he's got a double, wow! Responding to Jerry Dunn's double earlier on. Both of the Academy lanes, but both for Fenway Academy, a double strike, 73 plus bonus balls. I heard the W word. Time 105 through six, my fantastic string as always, usually one, two, spare chance. Ooh. And we got away, furious himself. Still, a, a miss. still a fantastic string working, but every box matters down the stretch. And don't say it again. The Paul Grant special missed the second, make the third. You wouldn't dare. Ten. Not me. No, never. Yep, it's one. So many times in my career, I missed it by just a little bit, and I make it the third time. That's why. Yep. Nothing wrong with 115 through seven. 113. Is it 113 or 115? Now, now 113. Eight. We got it. Yep, so 113 through seven. Still a great string. Job for the turkey. He will get it! Triple strike! Bang! Wow! Tim Jalbert, a turkey! A pulse for Dunn. What a performance by Tim Jalbert. Struggled the first five. They hung with them. Triple strike. Dunn coming back for number one. Missed it on the rebound. Not the object that he wanted. Nine, 122, upset with his ball in those last two boxes. 122 through eight. 26 pin lead for Fenway Academy, their biggest lead. They got a triple strike and a spare to one spare for A-plus accounting. And extra marks to boot. Here's Merrill on a spare. He's in the pocket. He gets nine. 
A wiggle on the kingpin, the five won't go. 81 through six, 35 pin lead. Matt Hyder trying to stop the bleeding. The bucket shot, they call it in Canada. That's, the, the, 10. that's the fifth time Harnett split. Merrill robs the ski ball shot, going for the 50. Split implying the head pin, of course. Hit the roadblock. Harnett for a spare, just missed the object pin, the two, 10 right corner. And Merrill wasn't there for a nine. 90 through seven in the first of three on Candleton Bowling Network. The finals of the men's 2023 ICC World Championship from Fairlane's Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Harnett nine, 70 through seven at the minimum. What a performance. You have a two triple strikes here in the playoffs today. Two different matches. Fenway Academy has taken a 35 pin lead all of a sudden. Merrill drops nine again. It curls at 105. That's better. Harnett crossing over. Strike bid nine. He has the six for a spare. And these Front. balls are so good. This is a, a treat to watch. Merrill. Spare this time. 100 and a ball through eight. Harnett. Got it. 80 and a ball through eight. 41 pin lead for Fenway just like that. Back to the top of the order, the update from Greg Gouillard. Uh, top of the order. Let's take a look, see here. 41 pin advantage, current statistics in the match are 18 marks to 13 for Fenway Academy, and pinning is five in favor of Fenway Academy as well. It's tilting their way in the early going, still 22 boxes remaining. And the 41 pin lead is a mist of a lead because all these teams can put up a bunch in a hurry. Nate LeBlanc, 72 through eight, Cole Fry, 89 through eight, coming in, not on marks. One, two, four, 10 for Nate. Cole, three, 10 right, seven, eight left. Off the wall, oh, right behind the four goes the violin bow, slid across. Cole Fry tries to get the spare, won't go to the seven, eight. Thrilling match here in Moncton. First two strings end up being lopsided and went for the wood to stop by Canelton Bowling Rules. Dan Caswell calling it middle string. No That'll shooting moving targets, not allowed. 10 for Nate, 82 through nine. Field goal for Cole Fry, 97 through nine. Boy, his future is so high. This guy has got the id factor. And again, next year at Bangor Brewer Mains and Brewer, Bangor Brewer Lanes and Bangor and uh, Brewer Lane, Maine, I'll get it right, mm -hmm. the World Tournament next season. November 4th to 9th. Home cooking for him. Crossing over, eight. That looked good for a strike. 6 10, spare chance for Nate LeBlanc. Fry, a quarter, yikes. Took up the three. Fair. Fry, one, six, 10. Nate, 92 to ball, eight for 100. Unusual low strength for him by his standards. 130 league bowler overall. 141 season ending high, his best season ever. Well, Fry, good bid. It's a nine on the object pin. 106 first string for Cole Fry from Brewer, Maine. I need two in a ball. One more ball for Nate LeBlanc to fire. Rocks a three to two right now for A plus and cut into the 20s here with a nine filler grader. And he'll get nine. 101 first string for Nate LeBlanc for A plus accounting. 29 pin lead for Fenway Academy, but Fenway has a triple strike from Jim Jalbert. Great finish there. We estimate the average spare fill to be about six and a half pins uh, per Candlepin Bowling Network stats. Thanks, Bob Lee, for compiling those, our and executive eight, producer. Yep, and sorry, Greg, at 8.3 for strikes, the average fill for the average Class A bowler. Unless you double them. Of course, that includes that. In Lake Doucette, 
98 plus a ball, seven, one, two, four. Spare opportunity, 105 after 98 through eight, 105 through nine. He has that, well, not a bucket anymore. Now that's the spare fill. He's on the spare, rather, 102 through eight. Chance hit, three, six, 10, nine behind the three. Blake for another one, missed number one. 202 high single, 462 high triple, high 5704 to Avon Valley Lanes and wins Nova Scotia. Chase we set went too far right, leaving up to 3 9. Blake in his 21st year of Canada from bowling. His family also bowled growing up. He gets a 10. 115 through 9. 10 for Jason in the match, 112 through 9. Family Academy trailed big, you know, 40s or so, high 40s at one point. They're up 22 right now. In the first of three. <laughs> Blake just said 31 years old. Won the singles knockout here the other day, right, Greg? That's it. A lot of bowls here have won it for Canada. That was great coverage as well. You can check that out on Candlepin Bowling Network on YouTube, preferably. That's probably the easiest place to find the videos on demand, but. We live stream on Facebook and YouTube, sometimes one, sometimes the other, but for this, certainly both. You're throwing that against Calvin Locke. One of the two, only one. Trying to get to 125. Jason, you said, object hit, got the one and eight, leads up to three, six, ten. Trying to get to 122 in the first. Lake do said 10, 125, finals opening string. Jason Duset, 8, 120 for a string for the 117 league bowler. 20 pin lead for Fenway Academy. It's gone back and forth. The marks are two to one. One is a triple strike and a spare for Fenway, a spare for A plus accounting. That's for the fourth and fifth bowlers, respectively. Matt McPhee, 86 through eight. Brian Kroll, 105 through eight. In the park of a strike, eight. That looked good. Six right, seven left. Wood rolling away. Kroll on the nose, another split. Six, 10 right, two, four, seven left. Splits are a tough part of this game. Extremely difficult shot. Give it a ride. Thanks to all the fine people at Fairlanes, we'll shout you out at a later point in the match, perhaps, or in the post game, one or the other. You deserve a lot of credit for putting this tournament together. 10 for McPhee, 96 through 9. Kroll, 10, 115 through 9. You just watch his mechanics, his his cadence, just an excellent person to study in bowling. A lot of these bowls obviously the same way, but just so accurate. We can't explain the science of every single split, but Ryan Crowell could tell you that having the break on that ball, that little tail on the end. He said it's all about rotation. That's it, rev rate, same thing. Eight for McPhee, five for Brian. 2-4, spare chance. Family Academy, yep. 20 pin lead. A lot, of a lot of people newer to the uh, sport ask, why aren't you curving the ball like in big ball? Well, there's no oil pattern on there, and it produces an unreliable hook as a result. That's what happens to big ball bowlers when they try to bowl without oil. So McPhee gets the spare in the 10th, 106 in the ball. Pete Weber tried that one time, and then uh, he said, no, oh, that doesn't sound fun. We think it's a great time, honestly, when you play it like this. Ryan leads up the one and the nine, trying to get to 125 here in the first of three on Kennelpin Bowling Network. Pete also complains a lot, in fairness. People in life complain? I can't imagine that. Steady motion, nine, 124. Finals, first string for Brian Kroll from Stowe, Massachusetts. All eyes on Tim Jobin left. He has a triple strike working right now. 
103 plus bonus balls. Jerry Dunn had a double earlier, 122 through eight on lane 14. Takes down eight, two on the floor. Attraction, that's Jerry Dunn's up next now. McPhee finishes up Sorry. with eight. My fault, I jumped the Sorry. gun. Scobo jumped the gun on me, my fault. 114 for Matt McPhee, finishing up now, Jerry Dunn. The real Jerry Dunn stands up. Well, the real Jerry Dunn, please stand up. So frustrating. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. You're doing a great job. Like I said, my, my mouth's in the future. My brain's in the past. We're a crew of three. It's our pleasure to bring it to you. Apologies for the occasional errors. No, e no editing here. You get all raw and live. Jerry Dunn, 5-1 split. For four in a row? Five in the first triple strike ball. Gee whiz. No marks his first five boxes. <coughs> Triple strike since. Jerry, a deliberate move. Miss left. Diamond plus to 10. Calvert, seven in the second. Triple strike box. One fifteen through eight. Jerry picks it up. Mm, that might matter. 10, 132 through 9, Jalba 9, up to 124 through 9. The power of the triple strike from every, Tim Jalbert. Every ball, every pin. Here we go, boys. That's what they're chanting, something akin to that. Jalbert is jamming here in the first of three. Two Pro Series titles also. Jalbert keeps Run getting, Jalbert keeps chaining strikes when he's on my camera stream for some reason. He's won two Pro Series, a runner-up to his good friend now teammate, Jimbo Ayotte, who won the Pro Series Bowl of the Year last year. Dave Barber, Dave Barber does a great job running the Pro Series. Nally Barber. Three-two split for Jerry. Jalbert, the bucket, they call it in Canada, the hay bell, some call it. I call it a diamond plus to seven. Object hit won't carry, and a great start. Tough second half. Jalbert just missed the object pin. The two has the 4 7 also. He's trying to get to 134. And Jerry's trying to get to 142 somehow. And nice try. Nine, though. 141 opening string. Jalbert a nine. 133. Triple strike. His only marks. Three strikes in a row. 133 for Tim Jamming Jalbert. Gives his team a 22 pin lead. And both anchor bowlers on marks right now, both on spares. Matt Harnett, 80 through eight. Chris Merrill, 100 through eight. In the pocket, eight. 88 through eight. Merrill head pin hit, he gets eight, he gets nine, 10, strike! Slow motion strike! On spare, big turn. 110 turner. through eight, 120, plus two through nine. Oh, we're in for a good one, folks. Harnett. Oh, get robbed by the wood. Give the man a break. Take that smudge off the board. No lead is safe. These two teams, Matt, good pinning as usual. 10, 98 through nine. 24 pin lead for Fenway Academy. They won the first. The last match by three pins over Able Construction. The first one pulled away. Going away. Arnett crossing over for strike. He got nine. Merrill, first one on the strike. A double! Wow! 140 plus bonus balls in the 10th. Please disregard the fact that I said that first double we saw might be the only double we saw. We got two doubles and a triple here so far. Jerry, a double. A that triple by Tim Job, but a double by Chris Merrill. What a match. That's it. Welcome to the World Finals, folks. Harnett, right on it, spare. Want to wait in the ball in the 10th, trying to keep it close. 34-pin lead for Fenway. Pouring it on, 623 right now to 589. Dan Cass will call a middle string. I'll be back for the third and final string. In overtime, if we have overtime. And we might see some lineup changes for A+. All Grant, Dan Castle, Greg Gouillard, Candle from Bowling Network, the World Tournament ICC Men's Finals team competition. 
Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at Fairlanes on Candleton Bowling Network. Harnett's bonus is eight. 116 for a string. Merrill for a triple. Gets to 10 to go. That's the 7 8. And where's Jeff Walsh, the Bulldogs, when you need him? Has to plow through the woods, the 7 8, to get to 150. And he gets nine. Comes back for the spare on double strike. 150. First string for Chris Merrill, 158. 158, what a performance from Chris Merrill for me, wow. Should be 641 if I've done my math correct. Let's take a look here. I'm gonna take your uh, levels off, Paul. That's that. Yep, 641 to 597 is confirmed. We'll get Dan Castle and Paul Grant switched around and we'll start string two in just a moment. I give you all a look at what just happened. Remember, a standard pro average and candle pin on the pro tier is anything in the 120s. So anything above that is really good. Needless to say, we've had quite a few strings way better than that. Two head pin hits to start. Take this away. Dan Castle will bring your levels up re uh, at this moment as okay. the second balls occur. Sounds good. Second balls in the first box of the second game. That's Cole Fry making a spare. Okay. Let me see the list here. I'm going to grab my stool to sit on. You got it. Okay, no changes according to Paul on uh, the ledger here. So we're going with the same teams. And the box is 10. Okay, can you put the score sheet up? Nate LeBlanc. Thank you. I will be back with you for one final time apparently. Been great to work alongside you all week. You too, my friend. We've done it before, but this is special. All right. LeBlanc puts seven in his fill. Or no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the score. I'll get it better. All right. LeBlanc drops seven, nine in the fill, and another for Fry. Did I get this? Oh, you got it up there. Okay. There we go. And uh, that was a six up there, or six down, four up there. There we go. We're getting it better. And uh, still one to go. So an open box for LeBron. And there's a 10 box, so 20 after two. Yeah. You see what I got going on? They're both wearing navy shirts. Yeah, yeah. So um, you see those arrows up top? We got it going. Yeah. So the team with the blue shirt and the other team with the blue shirt too. So Fenway, my friend Jason Doucette on your right, and... Blake Doucette on the left. Jason Doucette with his uh, almost unique off the opposite, off the same foot approach, but it works really well for him. And uh, Jason Doucette drops four. That four, is. yep, I, I'm looking for an eight pin. Uh, Blake Doucette drops three, or six, seven. Come on, Dan. Seven, three up, seven down. Been a big week. We haven't taken a single box off. Jason Doucette is open. Blake Doucette has a spare. And so Jason looking to clean up some pins here, and he gets a couple more for a seven box. A reasonable out out of that. It was possible to send the pin into the corners to try and collect a few more, but just try to minimize the damage on the third ball. That's the aim of the game. So it's a good question. Who is the guy in the red shirt? Well, he's been... Moving around with the Fenway Academy team, so I'm not sure. I don't know that bowler. I'm sure. Evan Riva. There you go. There's your answer. Another great bowler out of Maine. Jason Doucette drops nine in his first ball. He's got just a 10 pin in. Wood pointing at him. And Blake Doucette punches right through. Both bowlers on the head pin. Jason Doucette's probably a better result. So four in the fill and a spread eagle to shoot at. Jason Doucette with a spare attempt on the 10 pin and goes wide. He's trying not to mess with that wood in the wrong way. I know he, I think the cap will take it, but. Blake Doucette trying to spare the spread eagle and gets just the right hand two, the six and a 10. Jason Doucette and he's wide again, so a nine box for, for Jay. And a seven box for Blake. 
Jason Doucette known there we go. Among, That's it. among bowling fans and friends as double guns. Why? Um, good biceps. Okay. I don't know when they started calling him that exactly. Um, he bowls with his brother John in Wednesday night speed league in Millis. Brian Coral. Also a bowler I know from our days back at Fairway Lanes in Natick, Massachusetts. It no longer exists. Is on the head pin, take leaves of spread eagle minus the three pin, and uh, puts a good bit on trying to kick out both and doesn't go. He might get to seven. He gets to seven. McPhee punched through in the beginning, and then he punched through the three nine on the second ball. Disconnecting the rack makes it tougher to pin out. Crawl looking for a 10. Gets a nine. McPhee trying to make some thin out of this and uh, looks like a eight box. I Looking for a nine, I don't see a nine pin. No nine pin, eight box confirmed. Brian Kroll on your right for Fenway Academy. First ball in the second box is away. Throw a nice double in the Round to qualify for the finals, and uh, both bowlers have a nine drop. Brian Kroll is looking at a ten pin, five pin for McPhee. So Matt McPhee has a pretty straight shot at his. There's nothing in the way. Brian's got some tricky wood there, and uh, that's what we're afraid of. Could we get something here? Nope, no action. So that gives McPhee a spare. Brian Kroll with a disappointing. Open box, he, he had a really good drop. But he gets the 10 after all. So he did what he could yeah. do with that. Ain't that the way it is? Sometimes the wood just isn't positioned right for you. Having to play it uh, at an off angle could cause it to deflect around and the ball to deflect around. Both the ball, the pins weigh two and a half pounds and the balls weigh slightly less by rule. An yeah. ounce or two. So yeah, you have a choice of two pounds Five, two pound six, two pound seven. Makes a difference. That one ounce in the ball makes a huge difference. Yeah, it's not a it's not a true decimal, even though we express it as one, two pounds, six ounces, two pounds, seven ounces, et cetera, et cetera. Tim Jalbert. Uh, it's pronounced Jalbert, correct? I'm not I don't know. Jalbert. Jalbert. He took out seven left to high low jack, one seven ten. And uh, Jerry Dunn, two and two. Two, four, six, ten. Jalbert missed a spare attempt. Got the 7 and 10 to go, but not the head pin. Oh, there's a late spare for Dunn. Good no break. No shot clock in this game. 10 for Jalbert. Got the object pin, got it to go. Both had tough spares to make, and Jalbert managed to move the wood around enough, so one came out of the channel on the right and took out that last pin. So... Jalbert on the second box, off the head pin. Take a look up. I think that's a six drop, but it looks like a seven when I look directly at it, so it's a seven. But it's six. Is it six? Surprise, there's an eight pin. Okay. Surprise. Those The eight pin and two pin and the three pin and nine pin are directly behind each other, so at the wrong angle, it's tough to call. Um, We're back here in this great DJ booth here at Fair Lanes in Moncton, New Brunswick. Thank you so much to the staff for letting us squat in oh, there for a bit. Oh, wow. All right, so first of all, Dunn put six on his fill. Jalbert made a great bid to pick that up, and that back pin that we couldn't see stayed up because we can see it now. Oh, yes. Spare for Dunn. Took his time to read that. Came in on the head pin and made everything go down. Dunn's marking in half the boxes, six and all. All right, 10 for Dunn, or for Jalbert, sorry. 10 boxes in a string, 10 frames in a game, it's all the same. All right, Chris Merrill on the right for Fenway Academy, and Matt Harnett, we've seen a lot of him, and he's on the left for the A-plus team. Merrill puts it in 
the, on the head pin well and ends up a little full, so he, he has a split. Similar splits, but um, Merrill's looking at the four, six, seven, ten banana split. Which wood is he going for? He's going for the right wood. Okay, took out the right two, didn't carry over to the others. And uh, Harnett's got the seven, ten split. Three pieces of wood I count on there. No, four. There's a fourth one next to the seven. It's going to try to make a move. It does. Good break for the A-plus team. And a nine box for Chris Merrill. Well, Chris Merrill was doing that as anchor just then, and now Matt Harnett, the emotional heart and soul of the team, at least one of them, certainly. He's been up to his tricks through the semifinals and now the finals. Great shot again. All right, Chris Merrill on the right for Fenway Academy. And uh, leaves the, what we call the outpost, the four horsemen left and a 10 pin. On a fill, Harnett takes out Wood. Nine. Wood. Wow. So a nine fill. Merrill puts a good bid on that, but misses a head pin. That wood has still got a little wobble to it. Got to be careful if it, the wood is sticking its tongue out of you, so to speak. End cap first. It risks deflecting the ball. Sure does. Where's he going? He should go straight at it. That's what he's doing. Gets it. It was I close enough to the wood. The man with the bun getting it done. <laughs> Maybe I should grow one of those. What do you think? He's we'll looking. wait. He's <laughs> There's the scoreboard, and Adelaide caught you off kilter there, Dan. <laughs> Mark's statistics are 22 to 22, in fact. Although Fenway Academy has stacked up a few double strikes to really make the difference here. Three marks to one outstanding by my count. We'll confirm those scores, but there you see them. Back to the top of the order with Cole Fry. Through the middle. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, Cole Fry's on the left side. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I goobered it up again. Sorry, guys. Because of the arrows. The arrows are messing me up. Strike on spare. Strike on spare for Fenway Academy's Cole Fry. In the meantime, Matt LeBlanc, Nate LeBlanc, ends up with an eight box. Okay. Maybe they should get numbers, you know? All right. Uh, we have a surrendering head pin. Going down <laughs> on, on uh, lane 13. They're Some, tougher to stand on end. Sometimes when that happens to me, I, I'm wondering, are you afraid of me? Or do you think, hey, you're not going to hit me anyway. I may as well fall for you. you know? <laughs> I don't know which. Throw you a bone. That's right. But you, regardless of the reason, you still have to reset. Can't shoot it in less than full wreck. For those who like watching pin setters, here's the Bullmore in action. Couldn't resist. That's a reference. That's a interest of all of its own. All right, LeBlanc with six down, four up in a diamond format. Fry on a strike. And why not start with eight? One and three are still standing. Yeah. George F551, that's it. And uh, LeBlanc taking a shot at that diamond. That wood didn't look too friendly, but he was trying to play off the right of the front pin. Nine in the strike, but an Ooh. open box in the third for Fry. Hmm. Tempo quickening up here. LeBlanc with an eight box. LeBlanc, let me get it right. Nine box for Cole Fry for Academy. That's right, the sea is silent when he's at home with his family, for example. And that's a 67 after four for Cole. That's pretty respectable. Spare, spare, strike. That'll do it. Okay, we have the battle of the unrelated Doucettes. Blake Doucette on your right for A-plus accounting and Jason Doucette on your left for Fenway Academy. Solid ball by Blake Doucette and leaves a five pin. Jason Doucette in the left pocket. 
And they're still falling. It's going to be a 5-10 split with some wood that's in pretty good position, I think. I might be wrong. It's better than shooting out of the plane, I think. Blake Doucette gets the spare off the wood. He missed by a couple inches to the left. He's expressing that, well, I got lucky that time. But the wood was well positioned to spin forward a little bit if he hit it on the left. Arc stacking up for A-plus accounting. You see four of those yellow blips on screen. And a spare for Jason Doucette. Put it right in the V of that wood, and it worked very well. Good junction, junction. It did its function. Checking for comments. I have it here as well for what it's worth. Here's Blake Doucette. Okay, Splits Blake. it up. Okay, seven down for the fill. And uh, he's hoping that split breaks up. Again, it's a castle, two pieces of wood, as is typical of that leave. wonder if that happens anyway. I, I don't know. I'm about to watch the slow motion. Head pin buzzing the two pin, or vice versa. And only five in the fill for Jason Doucette. So Blake's got interesting wood. I don't know if it'll go to the right or the left. Let's find out. We will find out. He went to the oh. right, and that left the four pin standing, but the five and the seven went. Ah, it was only laser beaming the five, seven. Jason Doucette, another spare for Jason Doucette. Nicely done. Took out that five. Nine box for Doucette brings up 47 through four. Okay, checking comments. As we bring up Brian Kroll, Richie's and Matt McPhee. Richie Sito with a compliment and a great suggestion. Everybody Richie. hit the like button. Yeah, that's it. Hit the thumbs up button on whatever platform you may be watching on, Facebook or YouTube. You, you'll find it there. Might be in the corner. Give it a sec. Matt find McPhee it. on the fill puts down nine. Brian Kroll on your left. Brian Kroll just out of the po pocket. The ball uh, crossed the head pin. The right, it went right toward the head pin and it took a slight break. One pin spare attempt for McPhee. Got it. Kroll with three down. He's got a four horseman in a triangle. I've seen a couple people make this, but not this time unless we get a break. Pin got hit by a messenger pin and it's not going down, so. Nine and another for Matt. Kroll has the one six ten to shoot at. Is he going to take the safety? Absolutely all day he takes the safety. He takes two. Said, I'm not messing around with trying to make the split when I can get two mm. easy pins and have a nine box. Mm, especially with that piece of wood right in front. Just minimize the damage on the third ball. Now, yeah. this is where counting the marks uh, comes into play because, sure, it, we see 43 for Fenway Academy, which is significant, although a surmountable lead in its own right. And then you see three marks to one, the yellow blips on the screen uh, between total and game. So those could add an extra 10 apiece, so the lead could really be as small as 23. All right, Matt McPhee on his fill ball, only three. Was off on a three pin and took out that side. Brian Kroll, as I mentioned before, saw him throw a 143 game in the semifinal. Just dropped eight. That 143 included a double and I think a 10, another spare. Something like that in the first half. All right, so Matt McPhee takes out a few more. Has the one and the eight left. Kroll misses right wide to the right. Nothing goes. It's a skinny stick. Sometimes the head pit stays up after two. Ten box for McPhee, and Kroll matches the ten box. All right, our next bowler is Tim Jalbert for Academy, for Fenway Academy, and Jerry Dunn for the A-plus team, and Dunn is on a spare. Kingswood bulletproof and able. Just coming up short to make it to this point. Oh, strong head pin hit. I thought it was going to the pocket, but he ends up with 
smaller fill than he wanted. I'll tell you what it is in a half a second. I show five. Yep, I, I agree. I don't see an eight pin. That's what I'm looking for. I know it may look obvious that it's a five, but a lot of times we don't see those back pins as well. They get blocked. Sleeper pins. Jalbert, nice eight drop. Just the four and a seven, a lot of good wood. And wow, what a shot that was for three straight. At my level of bowling, I look at that and look like, oh, this is going to be a tough one, and he just made it look easy. Matching spare by Jalbert. Good response. I'm looking at that in a delay. Yep, he came in on the 2-4 pocket, and that was perfect. Swap, switch over to Facebook and see what's going on there. I'll stay on YouTube. All right. <coughs> Actually, there's two Facebook feeds. So you can go to the direct, directly to the Candlepin Bowling, Candlepin Bowling Network channel on Facebook, and you actually have different comments coming in than, than uh, through the Candlepin Chat link to Candlepin Bowling Network. So six fill... Five fill for Dunn. See what I mean about that eight pin hiding back there? It's there. You can. You got to look close. Mm -hmm. Eight fill for Jalbert. Dunn just picks out two. He punched out a half Worcester without the whole rack there. Chance for another safety shot, perhaps. Whoa! Wow. That would miss the ten by millimeters, and it's. I don't think that's out of gas, if I'm honest. It's going to tap it. Yeah, just, just a gentle love tap. Ooh. Nine box for Dunn. And then a ten box for Jalbert. Okay. Here come our anchors. The left is Chris Merrill for Fenway Academy. On the right is Matt Harnett for A-plus accounting. Oh, what a nice nine drop filling that spare for Harnett. Harnett. Mm -hmm. um, we are asked by Phil Rye, what's the live gallery crowd like? Not as many people as were here when we had all the teams here, but there are quite a few teams who are out that are watching. There's family members. It gets loud and raucous. So Maybe some of those uh, folks are now on here because our crowd numbers are huge for the finals, as it should be. Yeah, we have, we yeah. have a lot of people here. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Double wood deflection away for Harnett. And no love for Merrill either. He's, he came in pretty good, but didn't pick out the 4 7. Harnett, again, well, you know what? I guess, relatively speaking, we're, the finals should be the highest numbers, but we're still thankful for every single one of you watching. Thank you so much. Well, we're getting a lot of viewership in the different channels we're on, so. 550, Bob Lee? Thank you. Thank you, Bob Lee. In the scope of our channel, which we began uh, slightly after COVID-19, uh, restrictions were ending to really try and bring Candlepin Bowling uh, footage back into the main, uh, back onto YouTube and back on the internet. That was tough for a lot of houses. Yeah. So uh, both bowlers are on the head pin, and Harnett has the four seven, not, or four eight nine ten, and um, good goodness, just two. For Merrill to shoot at, he picks him up. They both were on the head pin in different leaves substantially for the guys. Tim Jalbert had a 10 pin that might as well have been glued down as far as he was concerned. 10 box for, for um, Harnett, Matt Harnett. Matt Harnett. I'll flip these arrows around this time around and give everyone a good look at the scoreboard. Dry at 67 through 4 with that spare, spare strike combo. Easily out in front of the field. And taking a look through, it looks like all scores are set, and there are no substitutions for either team. Uh, it may still happen a box from now, but uh, you must substitute before the halfway point and not on a mark. So I'd say Fenway has the advantage at the moment, 29 pins and two open marks. And right now we switch sides again. So we have Cole Fry for Fenway on your right. Nate LeBlanc. On the left, and Fry puts, nice. a, puts a nice spare down with a big bunch of pins. I didn't even call how many dropped. LeBlanc Three of them. Eight. He threw the strike ball second. Yeah, and there's the if, – if you had made a bet on those sh that shot before the second ball of these guys, 
you would have probably bet on more likely that LeBlanc would have had a spare there. But that's the game. Got a nine box. All right, we have a change, uh, Paul uh, Glean from the teams. One of the guys just bounced the ball into lane 12. Whoa. They got to go get it or turn on the lanes to get the ball set and return to work. So Fry is 77 after five with a fill ball. LeBlanc at 45 after five. And uh, we're, get, yep, and I see we have a change on the A-plus team. And really, that's not fair. The quarter Worcester. And the gentleman subbing in on. Yep, that's Sean Dion now. Yep, Sean Dion. And uh, he's on your left for A+. Plus. And um, this is. Um, Third ball is coming up for each. Yep. So Cole Fry picks up a nine. No spare for either. Nine boxes for both. It is Sean Dion on the pronunciation. I really hope I have that right. I Dion, maybe? I don't know. Um, but I think that's a, a reasonable uh, guess at it. And I think that. Hope, that hoping so, but yeah. I, wa I want to get we, it right. We, we want to be 100% right. Not kind of right. All right, Jason Doucette on your right, filling a spare. In the pocket, little light, and only gets five down. Blake Doucette on your left. It's on an open box. And uh, he's off the head pin and leaves a four horseman leave. Open in the American sense, I suppose. Yep. One, three, six, seven. Jason Doucette. Whoa, what a spare on that split. Beautifully done. Gotta love those three and one conversions. Sweet to see the pin shoot it to the corner. Blake Doucette tries to, oh, he's gonna get it anyway. It didn't go with the ball, but a piece of wood came flying back and nudged it out. Finally, so the, spares. Finally the 10 pin cooperates. It had help. Jamie says, you have it right. The Sean Dion pronunciation, thank you. If so. Well, Jason Doucette puts up a disappointing three fill on his, and so he's got to shoot at a half Worcester minus a five pin. Doucette, mm. the other Doucette, Blake Doucette, puts it also on the two pin, and he takes out three. So Yeah, neither of the Doucettes uh, getting th 13 and oh. 14 bonus pins, really, on three marks. You'd expect it to be more in the... 20s perhaps or close. Jason Doucette put it through the hole again. And uh, Blake Doucette almost did, but he was solid on a head pin and took out a few more. Yep. Jason Doucette on this, and there's a 10. Aha. I've seen him do that a 100 times. I've seen him take out the castle with no wood. Eight box for Blake Doucette, 10 box for Jason Doucette. Okay, on your right. Here comes Brian Kroll again. And he's bowling against Matt McPhee on your left. Neither on a spare. Check, check, one, two. That's better. Brian Kroll, his first ball. Trying to get some advantage after his 38 and 4 to 50 and 4 for McPhee. And he came in on the two pin and took out uh, five. McPhee was on the head pin. That's a little bit of a better break, and I really like that wood by the three. He came in a little full and almost punched out, but it came through. Again, Kroll, he's play, played on the inside of that and um, almost got something going. Now let's see if that wood works for him. Mm. Oh, you got to be kidding me. I think he hit it maybe a little too low. All right, so if Brian Kroll can make 10 out of this or 9, then... Uh, not a big difference, so maybe an eight. And a nine for McPhee, so just a one pin gain for the A-plus team on that box. 30, 37 pins so far, 
Match statistics are 29 marks to 26 for Fenway Academy. One pin in the pinning. That is pins left standing on the third ball. Kroll, he's way off under the under the two pin, but he's getting a lot of wood moving around, so he has kind of a sideways diamond here to play with. There's a strike for the A-plus team. McPhee uh, puts a strike in the sixth. Now Kroll shooting at the one three five nine. All over it, no problem at all. So couldn't get a strike, but he got the spare. That, and that that's oftentimes is just as fine. As long as they don't start stacking them up on you. So now going to our fourth, mm -hmm. fourth bowlers, Tim Jalbert on your right playing for Fenway Academy and Jerry Dunn on your left for the A-plus team. 37-pin lead in total for Fenway. All we care about is total. We don't get points or strings on this one. All right, so. All right, so um, Chris Merrill was off to the left and dropped uh, five. He has a one, five, six, nine, ten left. Jerry Dunn punched a half Worcester right, so he only took out two. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, uh, Merrill missed everything on that one, so. We'll see what Dunn does in response. And uh, he was trying to take that and picked up the one and the five. Jalbert, sorry. Um, so. The wood's there to help. Somehow I'm looking down at the wrong page. There's a lot of information over a nine box for Jalbert. It's not much in it. The wood was covering it anyway. Eight box for Dunn. So both had kind of uh, Funky box there. It wasn't the prettiest, but they both ended up pinning out okay. This is Candlepin Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube. Here we are on the biggest uh, stage in men's candlepin competition, but to see all our great oh, bowling, Joel. All, Joel. see all our great bowling content uh, across a variety of leagues, uh, please like our page on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. Chalbert put one in the pocket, and uh, Dunn put one on the head pin. Chalbert uh, didn't get any love down there and dropped five. He has a hay bale, uh, what do you call that? Hay bale, I say. Hay bale, okay. A five pins. Uh, in the meantime, Dunn, a, Dunn went on a head pin twofold, took out the half Worcester leave, four pins he dropped. It's a debatable term. Good bid by Jalbert down there. Cluster of five. Ooh. Threatens. Oh, wouldn't that have been something? These only go about 1% of the time, the spread eagle conversion. And these are the guys most likely to do it, are the bowlers here. Nine box for Jalbert. Nine box for Dunn. The same spread eagle pins that you see in our logo for Candlepin Bowling Network. Yeah, but I don't want to see that. <laughs> well, no, no. I want to see the logo. I just don't want to see that leave. Well, as long as it's not your eagle or it's the other guys. Yeah, well, then I do. Then I do. No one really roots against the other bowler. Everyone yeah. hates the pins, though. No, we... we uh, a healthy hatred of the pins. Yeah, that one's a frustrating one when that happens. Speaking and of. And the cliche, uh, leave the half Worcester left. And he almost punched out to the other side, but it wasn't quite full enough on the three, so he got some action there that took out a few more. So six down for Chris Merrill. This is Chris Merrill, not, not the last bowler. And Matt Harnett. He's looking at the five and ten. Attractive wood in front of the five made move the ball in direction. That's what he did. So he same played. old tricks. Yep. Same old tricks. Seven box for Merrill. Um, so he played that wood low. It starts the ball moving to the right. Kicks the pin over to the right. That's knowing your your uh, shots. Could have just as well deflected the wrong way. Merrill drops seven, and the three and the nine and the seven are still there on the fill. Oh, oh geez. goodness! One five, just a, just a full Worcester punch out. Whoa! Just two in the fill. Welcome to Candlepin Bowling. Merrill trying to take advantage, and the seven pin doesn't go. All right, if you can spare this, you deserve a medal. 
or a trophy later. That's, one of the tr that's true. And that's what it, we're all after, a $10,000 grand prize and your name on the world's trophy, the International Candlepin Championship Trophy. Won last year by the Academy team from the Boston area, and they were eliminated in the last round. So we have the Fenway Academy team, and Harnett did a pretty decent job of getting out of that. He took one side at a time, didn't try to get too tricky, and ended up with a nine box. Got to respect that. There you see it, 36 pins. One mark on each side. Current overall standings, uh, 30 marks to 28 in the match. Pinning is absolutely even. A three-pin hit for um, Dayton LeBlanc. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Dion. Sean Dion, that's right. Okay, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong sheet, but we have a, we have a sheet here, that, the cheat sheet set up with the names of the bowlers on our first and last. It helps us also with pronunciation. But regardless, Dion. Such as that. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Cole Fry goes right where he needs to be, but apparently not. The wood deflected everything. All right, get him third ball, I guess. That's what it's there for. And a nine box for Dion. And a matching nine drop box for Fry. In any box, while Fenway really wants to get way ahead, if they can uh, stave off any efforts by the other team to move ahead, um, they're okay. They don't have to win the string. It obviously is to their benefit to do so, but there are 36 pins total and in total ahead right now. Dion drops eight. The two and the four remain. Try on the three pin. Has a seven drop, and the one, two, and seven stay up. And I think that wood could be tricky. And uh, if it were me, I'd probably go on the outside of the head pin if I could, because I think that the wood's not covering in between. On the two pin attempt, there it is for Dion. And let's see what he does. Yep, he's going, no, he's going in the middle. And that's what I was afraid would happen if you went to the pocket, that the wood would get touched and deflect things. So no spare for Cole Fry. But he gets a nice clean 10 box. Nothing wrong with that. Spares better, though. All right, I'm going to check the other Facebook run that we have going here. It's linked to Candlepin Chat. Some people are linking it through Candlepin Chat, and we get different comments. Hmm. I might check the transparency in a second uh, okay, after nice this, time. but after this uh, series of boxes. This is now uh, yeah. the Doucettes. The du du Doucettes, not related. Blake Doucette on your right, Jason Doucette on the left. Canadian J Doucette and American Doucette. That's rough. And uh, Blake Doucette made a good bid. Jason looking for a shot here. Pick up the half Worcester minus a pin. And Michael Poland, who is up, is on the scoreboard. Right now it's Fenway Academy. That um, pin differential is live. All right, Blake Doucette with a 10 box. Jason yep. Doucette with a 9 box. Let's have that show real numbers, please. There we go. So 35 is the lead for Fenway Academy at the moment. As we are two bowlers deep into our eighth box we're about to start. They're tied up at 78 apiece after seven for these two guys. All right, so Blake gets some action. Moves on the two on the three pin. Jason Doucette. Ooh. Solid hit. And is it gonna go? Tip. Oh, it got nudged. You were hit. So Blake Doucette shooting at the one, four, seven, ten. Jason Doucette just the five pin with a snow plow in front of it. Blake Doucette goes through the right-hand hole. Nothing goes. Jason Doucette takes the advantage. Thanks for the candy bar. A plank lying right in front. Well, the worst thing ever is to miss that. Or whatever strange candies come out of that box of sweets you got, Dan. <laughs> what he's referring to is I subscribe to a um, monthly box. 
it's called Universal Yums, I think it's called. It's pretty good. And every month you get a box of various snacks mm. and treats from a different country. So we, I brought a couple of those boxes because we need to go throw them at my house. And um, we, uh, Greg and I and Paul have been snacking in some different things in there. Some of them are sweets, some of them are chips and stuff like that. Blake, do, uh, now we're on the next bowlers. Bowlers three. Cole and McPhee. Strike for Matt McPhee on a double. That's a double strike that can chip into the lead substantially. So Kroll's hoping to match the strike anyway. He's on a he's on a spare. Good ball. There he goes. Says you could do that. I can too. He came in on the Brooklyn side for him. He's a right-handed bowler, and uh, was in the one-two pocket. All right, matching strikes. Sometimes when your opponent gets a shot like that, it seems to motivate you to get one-two and it. Kroll didn't need his opponent to do it to be able to do it, but um, I don't think it hurt. All right. McPhee looking for a triple here. The biggest of scores on the biggest of stages. Ooh. Oh, and a lemon drop. Ooh. Is Paul down on the lane yet? Oh, <laughs> if. Uh oh, he's, he, he's, he's signaling that's 10 bucks. <laughs> the, they're doing it like, don't you dare, don't you dare. <laughs> that's a running joke we got. All right, Kroll with the just five so far. McPhee, well, he's getting some action, so it's eight. Not a total mess there, but still, great couple of boxes there. Kroll trying to mm. spare. Well, how did the two stay up? Huh. It's a nine fill, but somehow the two pin didn't go with the rest of the gang. Well, we can tell you why that. We can tell you why the front pin didn't go down. The rest, you're on your own. That's a rock fact. <laughs> Kroll with a nine box. McPhee with a 10. So that puts Kroll at 94 after eight. McPhee with 108 after eight. And we're still at a 35 pin lead with a mark by both. And hopefully I didn't take your. We have seen three double strikes and a turkey triple strike. Some refer to turkeys as triple. Uh, marks. I also can't say turkey properly. All right, neither bowler on a mark. Jerry Dunn on your right. Punches oh. out a half Worcester on the right side. On your left is Tim Jalbert. And uh, I think his result's a little better. They both hit the same pin, the three pin first. Jalbert's left with a one, two, four, six, nine. Um, I think that's probably more makeable than the half Worcester is, isn't it? Seemingly oh with the geez, wood back that's there. not a good thing to happen right now. He just punched out the four pin. Jalbert is on there and uh, sends everything around, but the nine mm. pin didn't get hit. Um, I don't sure. think it's any fault, fault of... Um, sure, it's standing, but Jerry's got to pin this. It's a lot of focus on the third ball. Good. Okay, seven, seven box for him. And a 10 box for Tim Jalbert. Seven's not the best box, but it's a good out, as we say. Third it's ball is a uh, Better than getting target. a three or a four, I can tell you that. Because if you stick with that three, then you've basically conceded a mark. Just bury it in there and get some sticks. Every ball, every pin. You never know which one will be the winning pin. All right, these two guys are pretty close to each other right now. Dunn at 79 and Jalbert at 76 after seven boxes. Without ever, without exception, each of these bowlers has been involved in multiple heart racing single pin wins or losses. Those are the sorts that get you thinking about every single shot. Oh, and single points too. By just, I think, I, I have to look at standings, but as I recall, I may be wrong, but mm -hmm. Fen Fenway Academy edged out the Academy team and that gave them a bye in the. Uh, first round of playoffs. Every ball, every pin, every point. All right, f six down for Dunn. One, two, seven, ten, gone. There we go. Back on track. And uh, Jalbert matches. He was shooting at the one, three, six. All gone for him. There we go. Base of play quickens two ball frames. Mark it up. And you did twice. Steady stream, two marks up on each side, so 38 pins for Fenway Academy. Matt Harnett on the right, Chris Merrill on the left. Matt Harnett for A+. Plus. Breaks up the spread eagle some. 
Chris Merrill, both pillars on the head pin. Merrill is looking at the 6 7 10, and Harnett at the 2 3 4 7. He's got wood in between. He's probably going to want to try to tap that three pin and go over. That's what he does. And, and there was an eight pin back there I couldn't see, and it worked. Merrill can't convert his spare. The seven pin doesn't go. Magic Matt again. He, he, he definitely gets his ball where it should be. It's one thing to read the shots. It's like playing pool. I used to be a decent pool player many, many years ago. And I can look at a, at a pool shot and get a good feel. We have a five pin down on, on uh, lane 12, 13. So they need to re-rack. But you can see the shots, but making it happen physically is a whole different game sometimes. And it's the same here with Candlepin. A lot of us can see what we need to do. But then following through with that and getting the ball out there to where it needs to actually happen with precision, especially when it's a shot that requires precision, that, that's what separates a run-of-the-mill bowler from some of these guys. And Chris Merrill is impressive. Not Chris Merrill, I'm sorry, Matt Harnett, too. Chris Harrell's impressive, too. I was Look at that. Speaking of impressive, Chris Merrill drops nine. Matt Harnett puts seven on his fill to start. Two, four, seven, six. Again, a hidden eight pin. You can see it when I stand up here. And uh, the two and the eight go. Merrill's shooting at a ten pin only and uh, puts it in the channel. Nothing going to happen there, but at least the pin stayed up, so he's got a shot for a ten. Harnett with a 10. Merrill back again in the channel. That pin won't count. Nine box for Merrill. <laughs> All right, everybody's switching up a little bit here. Greg double checking the scores. First ball for Cole Fry for Academy. Drop seven. And a strike for Sean Dion. Cole Fry is going to attempt to spare the 2 7 10. Great bid, but the 10 doesn't get touched. And uh, bounces that ball all over the place. Back on the deck. Flat channels will do that. The way that that's flashing, I'm wondering if there's another chip out of that ball. But a nine box for Colt Fry. What did you see? I don't know. It just looked like it was wobbling a little as it spinned on the deck. Ah. I guess we'll find out when it comes back because they'll take it out of play if it's got a problem. Five drop for Colt Fry. Dion on a strike no double but seven to start two four and six for him Cole Fry looking at two four five seven eight and the seven st stays up no spare Merrill at 75 through eight otherwise confirmed on this uh, Fenway side and an eight fill in a strike and he's left with the two and the six to shoot at. So Fry trying to convert a 10 and no problem about that. So a 10 box for Cole Fry. Took out the seven pin nice and clean. And through the hole for Dion. Hmm. Couple um, pins. So an eight box. But he had definitely had a gainer and that brought the lead for Academy down to 14 in total pins. Not for the game. Good recovery to get that spare strike on the end to rescue the string. Good pinning allows that to happen. A-plus is up 30 in this game, but we're looking at total score only. No points awarded. Whoever has the most pins at the end of three games is your champion. Double-digit strings happen often enough, even to the best, but you don't want to do it on this stage. So Jason Doucette on the right just put six in his fill. Blake Doucette on your left dropped six as well. They're both looking at three and one of a different angle. Is that an eight pin back there? Did I miscount Jason's? 
Or is that a six? That's eight. Okay, so the eight was up, so it's one less than the fill. Or no, no, that's right. Or sorry, no, 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 no. no, no that's no, a six no. pin. That's a six pin. Ten in the box and nine in the box, and I've missed one because I've oh got my head down. So sorry. That's okay. The fill is six, uh, one oh three. There we go. Well, let's stop. let me see if I can see that because uh, it could have been a nine boxes, ninety six through nine for Blake Doucette. Okay, Jason Doucette drops six for sure on that one, two, nine, ten are left. I was thinking nine pin, not eight pin. I'm sorry. Blake Doucette on a head pin and drops five. Leaves three on the left, two on the right. Jason Doucette trying to make some magic out of that, but just takes his head pin out. Blake Doucette trying to pick up the two, four, seven, six, ten. Then 20 pins now. 20 pins the advantage. Remember, it was 44 going in. Jason Doucette it has an eight box. Blake Doucette, the two, six, ten remain. Going for the safety. And he gets two more for a nine box. All right, our next bowler is Brian Kroll on your right. Good crowd on hand. For Fenway Academy. And in the third spot for A plus is Matt McPhee. Matt McPhee is at 108 after eight. Brian Kroll's at 94 after eight. <coughs> Kroll with a great pocket ball, takes out nine. Five pin stays up. McPhee's on the head pin two. And he leaves a check mark, takes out, takes out six. And the three, five, six, and seven stay up. Kroll, is he going to go for the wood or for the pin? And he oh, capped no. the wood. Seen that a few times. And uh, does not get to spare. McPhee trying to take advantage. Ooh, ring five. Definitely on the object pin, but the five pin stayed up. <coughs> Kroll's got his. Ten box for Brian Kroll. And a nine box for Matt McPhee. I'm wondering if uh, Brian hadn't tried to sweep the wood, it might have worked better, but he was going at the pin. There was some of it peeking from out from behind that wood, most of it actually, and uh, just capped, caught the cap of that on, on the, as the ball passed by. First ball for Brian Kroll in the ninth box. Five are out, five are up. Seven drop for Matt McPhee. Brian Kroll has the three, five, six, nine, ten. Okay, good hit, but the back two don't go out. The five and the nine don't go out. McPhee oh, yeah. has a spare there. His fifth mark, including a double strike. I don't know what more uh, Brian could have done on that. He, he definitely hit the right spot but they wrapped around. Kroll with a nine box. So he's at 113 for his string. Matt McPhee still has another ball to, sh to throw before we close out his string. Possibility for A-plus accounting to go 600. Uh, they would need another mark and good count on the ones they have up. And uh, McPhee. Like puts that. nine on it. That's pretty big. That changes the complexion of this game, this match. It's now a 10 pin match. Marks are, are Marks even. are 34 to 33. Our four, fourth bowler's coming up. Tim Jalbert on your right for Fenway Academy. Jerry Dunn on your left for A plus accounting. US versus Canada match here. Marks each. And um, mm. that's a seven fill for Jalbert. And an eight fill for for uh, Dunn. Not a word was said prior to that. <laughs> it gets quiet before every ball right now. And 
And uh, Tim goes to the right and misses everything. Jell um, Dunn just has the five and the eight. He gets it. He has five marks. Dalbert, or Jalbert, I'm sorry, ends up with a nine box. All right, they're going to their 10th box. 102 to 107 in favor of Dunn right now, but Dunn's on a fill. So Tim Jalbert for the Fenway Academy team. This could be a lead change possibly. Mm, oh my, oh my. On the head pin, but look at that. Not so fast. Four, five, seven, eight, nine. Sequential pins, but not in a sequential order. There's a little wavy pattern down yeah, there. Three, five fills, but that was not his fault. Had a Done on a fill. That splits a split on another one. He got a break. He dropped seven. Now he has a four, seven, ten. A lot of wood there to move around. Not sure how Jalbert's going to take this. Maybe go toward the right side of the five. See if he can get something moving. Jerry Dunn thinking, I could have been closer to a 400 triple by now. Ooh. Oh, what a bid. Everything but the four pin goes on that. They're so good, they get disappointed when shots like that don't go. I see a warm-up in progress right now. I'm trying Wait. to catch the name of the shirt. Jalbert, or not, I'm sorry, again, um, Dunn does not get the, the uh, spare. So... Uh, Sigh of relief for the Fenway team on that. <coughs> Jalbert picks up the 10. Done. A nine box. So that finishes up with 121 for Jerry Dunn and a 112 for Tim Jalbert. And it's a four pin game right now in favor of Fenway. Four pin match. The game's actually a 40 pin game. So our last two boxes here. Start with Chris Merrill. Dunn should have two more. That is correct. Uh, fill a seven. All right, so Chris Merrill. No spare there. Matt Harnett shooting at the three, four, and six, and just gets the six to go. Jerry Dunn at 123. Okay, so eight box for Merrill and nine for Harnett. Thank you. So it's a one pin get match right now. All else is correct right one now. One more game to go. But the Fenway team doesn't want to be bowling uh, without having something on top of it. Neither does the other. Thanks, Jerry, for that. All right, we have a re-rack on 13. The five pin is missing. Look at that margin. Nail biter here, folks. We see it. We're not going to say it aloud, but you see it. <laughs> They'll put it on the overhead projector here. Fair Lane smoked in New Brunswick very soon. They, they just started to, you know. All right, Merrill takes out four. Four horsemen plus the seven and the eight, so Kind of a Cleary and an outpost together. He catches the eight only. Harnett took out five. He's left with the five down there. And uh, almost gets a mark on that. Good out for Merrill. That might matter. Disappointing 93 game for him. Had a few splits in there. He sure did. And uh, that puts Harnett at a... 10 box and a 124 is three and 554 to 597. I'll take your levels down, Dan. We'll switch back in with Paul Grant. There we are. And we'll uh, do the scoreboard here. 554 to 597 is confirmed. One pin. Holy smokes, people. We're going down to the final string. Total pinfall decides the winner. And these three pit strings of candle pin bowling.
one thirty-six leading the way. Courtesy of Matt McPhee. We're underway. I'll take the scoreboard away. Third string of three. And that's a strike for Cole Fry to begin. And a spare to respond, John Dion. Take your levels up there, Paul. And put this spare and strike on the board for Fry and Dion. Oh, look at this. John Dion got a strike on spare. Roof might go up. Galeri left, Galeri right side for Cole Fry. That's the leave we call it for Bob Galeri, that four horsemen diagonal and that darn inner pin makes it significantly more difficult and surprising to see him ring the 10 pin. It was a very good effort. Nine is the fill on the strike as a result of that good second ball. Arrows are now the correct way. And the 10 box brings him to 29 through two. Welcome back, Paul Grant. Thank you, Greg Gouillard. Thank you, Dan Castle. Paul Grant, Greg Gouillard, Dan Castle, live from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at Fairlanes, the Men's World Championship ICC Finals, third and final string, one pin lead for Fenway Academy after two. But now the lead goes to the home team early in the third. We're on Kenneth Bowling Network on YouTube and Facebook. Subscribe free, never a charge, always free. Kenneth and Bowling Network on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Eight in the fill, the Star Trek character, seven of nine, the Queen Borg. Or eight in the first ball, I should say. Now we got it going. This is Nate LeBlanc, not like you said, we have a yep. substitution. Missed that chance there. J Jason Doucette with Family Academy. Third time in the finals, trying to get their first win. Missed right, leads up to three. Nothing like the great game of Candlepin and Bowling. Nate LeBlanc, nine through one. If there's a tie after the string, which it could be, it'll be a one string roll off till somebody wins. Jason Doucette, 10, no relation. For what it's worth, it would be one string and then if that's tied, it's two boxes each. So it's a one pin lead in the match. Tied in the game, all that matters is the total score. No points. The right for ten thousand dollars with team to split nine drop for LeBlanc on lane fourteen. Lane thirteen is Jason Doucette just missed the pocket. He has the one two four spare chance. Yeah. Got it spare. Spun the wood in. Every mark is going to be big down the stretch. 19 of the ball through two in this championship match, the final string. He's set to answer. Got it. The wood ah. came back for the two. Spill the wraparound shot, the illegal block in the back for the spare. Spilled it in a different order. Anyway, they fall. 20 of the ball through two. Two marks to one for A plus accounting, down one of the match. It's confirmed. Fenway Academy up one. $5,000 difference between first and second. This holiday season, all season long, please consider Candlepin gift cards. a great way to get friends and family involved in this great game. Support your local bowling centers. Invest in Candlepin bowling with Candlepin gift cards. Great stocking stuffer. And for any occasion, the gift that keeps on giving. Candlepin gift cards. Matt McPhee on lane 14 with the 4-1 split. Brian Kroll on lane 13. But Family Academy, strike bid, 9, 10, strike! The five goes last. 10 plus two to start the third. McPhee, tough leave, missed left, one of the 10. Now it's two marks apiece for each side. Very quiet here, all of a sudden, tense match. Close all the way through. Matt McPhee, nine through one. 
The official scores is two pins for Fenway Academy. It's been tight all the way through. It'll get up there for a while, but Fenway, A plus came storming back. Fenway has the lead by two pins in the match. And right for the championship. We've seen. McPhee, beautiful ball, eight, six, ten, right side, wood in front to help a high piece. And some to the left, two pieces. Ryan Kroll on a strike, over double, nine. You can't have every strike doubled, honestly. We've been spoiled so far. Two triple strikes we've seen today, multiple double strikes. Nine of the first strike ball from the veteran 58-year-old Brian Kroll, a class act and a terrific, excellent pinner. So accurate. Great guy, too. He got it, spare, pulled through it. Kroll the answer, missed it. Nine of the strike, 19 through one. Matt McPhee, 19 of the mm. ball through two. And Brian with the miss again, nine, 19 through, make that 28 through two after a spare nine, nine, 28 through two. Now it's three marks to one all of a sudden for A plus a constant, they're down 10 in the match. They have their virtual lead overall. This is Jerry Dunn. Brian, Brian in chat brings up an interesting point. This is where bowlers want to be in a moment like this. Absolutely. One, one pin going in. Every pin counts. Jerry Dunn in the pocket. As a triangle, the middle pin is the two, the right is the five, to the left is the four. Tim Jabba, a triple strike early in the first, after five boxes without a mark on a triple strike. Sound off in chat, do you want to see some overtime here? It would be one string if uh, we had hey, to go further. Hey, we got one hour, we saved one hour going back to Massachusetts, so we could use the extra hour for overtime. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all in. Mm. For a spare, I missed it right. Don leaves up the two and four, had a 214 recently. Jabba for a spare, missed right. He's up number one. Tapped it, won't go. Jerry, 10. And now an unusual sight for people accustomed to big ball bowling, a bowler running down the lane to pick up a pin. But this is very standard here. Any piece of wood that shoots more than two feet forward of the so-called of the pin deck, which is marked by a dead wood line, has to be taken out. 10 for Tim, 10 for Jerry. The match lead is 10 points in Fenway Academy's direction. Academy Lanes won it last year. They fell short in the semifinals. It could be another academy in a sense, Fenway Academy, if they can hold on. A plus accounting looking for their fifth championship. As a pin falls down, there'll be a reset as the nine pin behind the three falls down. Uh, what a time you're thinking ahead to the next shot. Right, give us an update on this marks if you can, please, and the pinfall. Mark situation is currently 39 to 36 for A plus accounting. Pinning is just one different, only one pin in the difference in the number of pins left standing in Fenway Academy's favor, which they have had as an advantage coming into this straight. Jerry Dunn spelled it out. He's up the eight. Tim Jalbert goes right, one, seven, nine, ten. Two pieces, or maybe three on the deck from my vantage point, way back here, three pieces. One, seven, nine, ten? Yeah, one, seven, nine, ten it is. There may actually be three. I think that piece of wood on the seven is doubled. Oh yeah, your step stool, come on. Step stool to C, it's way up, way back here. There you go, bud. Done, doesn't oh. get to go. Unless, nope, not from behind either. Jalbert just missed a nine. Ugh. Throws his hand skyward. Well, the championship presentation at the end as well, plus interviews for the winning team. Jerry Dunn, 10, 20 through two here in the final string of the match. 10 for Jal, but he has two tens also. It's a 10 yeah. pin lead for Fenway Academy. Three marks to one the other way for A-plus accounting. <laughs> Sorry, reading chat here, our executive producer Bob Lee saying, Paul still has his voice for the final. He wins the bet. That's right, Bob, I got it. <laughs> I think you owe Dan Castle some of that money. He covered us well too. I'll take the 100. <laughs> I'm halfway dying, but I'm fine. Matt Harnett, the captain. Well, not the captain Ooh. necessarily, but the anchor ball and the leader of the team. One, two, four. Starting his third, five, two split for Chris Merrill. Had a great first string, struggled in the second. 
but he's got game. Raise your microphone. Harnett missed right. Merrill, good second ball. Seven wobbles left, 6 10 right with a guide in front of each. Now a 123 league bowl, a 132 his best year. Chops out the head pin. And Merrill gets the sure two each. Well, Chris with a nine, Matt with an eight. To start their third and final string. That gives Fenway Academy an extra pin. They're up 11 in the match. That's how close it is. And they want the money, but more importantly, they want that title. A and plus Fenway, it. third time in it. A plus is two extra knocks, two open spares. Merrill, a full husband plus a triangle, the 6 9 10. Actually, an extra open spare and an extra open strike, to be precise. Arnett trying to kick it over. Good bid. Got the three, not the two. Merrill chops up the nine. Ouch. And I win the Iron Man Award. Well, some, some of the bowlers did. They rolled all 33 strings in the round robin. Now that's stamina. Splits the uprights for a 10. Matt, 18 through two. Chris Merrill, a rare five, 14 through two. Now it's a single digit lead for Family mm. Academy and the marks favor, whoa. eight plus accounting, three to one. Whoa, 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 and now five, it's a touch, it's swing. A it's a touchdown lead, six points for Fenway. Virtual lead is eight plus accounting. As we go back to the top of the order, Paul Grant, Dan Castle, Greg Gouillard on Kennelpin Bowling Network from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada, the World Tournament, the men's ICC finals on Kennelpin Bowling Network. Cole Fry, 29 through two. Forrest and right, the one, three, six, 10. Sean Dion on a strike after a spare. Double strike, yes! A plus in the lead. Off the bench. 50 Big. plus bonus balls. Fry spins around two. Fry a nine. One of the best rising stars in Maine, 38 through three. Three marks to one, including a double strike for A-plus. They have a five-pin lead in the match. Anyone's game, anyone's match, anyone's $10,000 to split, anyone's trophy. Let's go, Cole. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Sean Dean, a 123 league bowl, a 130, his best season ending average ever, from Bridgewater, Nova Scotia, originally from Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. He has a high single of 204, high triple 464. This multi-strike frequency is ridiculous. It's like duck pin numbers. Ball for over 32 years. Fry missed left, 5-2 split. Frustration setting in. Could we see our third triple strike of the day? Second in this match, if so. Dion. Still Not there. Eight. One of the three. Generous leave. Filled itself. 58 through three. Fry trying to work out of it. Hit the object. 4 7 10. Dion for another one. He's got it. Spare and double strike. 68 through three. 78 and the ball through four. Wow. Eight for Cole Fry, 46 through four. All of a sudden, A plus a 25 pin lead. Last string and you throw a double strike, four marks. It is good to be Sean Dion right now. Three marks to one for A plus accounting. Both are marks here. He set strike on spare, Jason 20. Make it 30 through two, 40 plus two through three. Matt, Nate LeBlanc spare is six, 25 through two. One, two, four in front, the eight playing hide and seek behind the two. For a spare, two full, as the mm. two and four. His season average, 118, high average for a season ever, ending 124, high single 202, high triple 462, and a high five of 704. He gets a nine. 34 through three in the third and final string. Blake from 
Avon Valley Lanes in Winston, Nova Scotia in his 21st plus year of Canopin Bowling. His family also bowled. His lead is 20 for A plus in the championship match on Canopin Bowling Network. To set, crossing over. Some call it the Brooklyn side, but you can't root for Brooklyn. Five in the fill. First ball on the strike, I should say. He's got the shot in front of the spare. Would come back with a five, it holds up. Did mm, the but, wood turn. But gives it a chance uh, to go into the seven. Yeah, very vertical, but I'm not going to put it past this world class bowler. Doucet using the whole approach. Second ball on the strike. Looks good. He's got it. Spare and strike. Another one. 50 through three. 60 to ball through four. Outstanding. The wood goes and five into the seven. How about that shot? Nate LeBlanc, 44 and a ball through four. What a battle. Jason Aaron Doucette. Moncton. Jason Doucette doing well to take another 20 out of the ATM. It's good to get 20 boxes in this game. What a great response by LeBlanc on the wood. Brian Kroll on the right for Fenway Academy, 28 through two. Matt McPhee on a spare on lane 13. 19 of the ball through two. On the head pin, a 3-2 split. He gets a lot of those, it seems, a lot of splits. So accurate in the head pin, though. On the head pin hit, he gets seven. Two, four left, six to the right. On the spare, 26 through two for Matt McPhee for A-plus accounting. Look for their fifth championship world title. They're up 17 right now. Still have two hits to one in their favor. Kroll, good bid. Oh, so close to the Whoa. seven. Oh, short. Kick, trying to kick it. Oh, the wood's rolling back. Will it go? It sails around. Not with the skinny part of the wood. It doesn't. Too bad. Test him up for a 10 box with the wood. Wished it was taking the red line express instead. Even they missed it close, it seems. Brian doinks it for a nine. Hmm. McPhee gets a 10. Brian 37 through three. Matt McPhee 36 through three. Brian 37, Matt 36 officially. 18 pin lead for A plus accounting in this championship match on Candlepin Bowling Network. Over 850 videos, in, over 850 videos in climbing. It's always free, never a charge. Please subscribe to Candlepin Bowling Network on YouTube. Like and follow us on Facebook as well. Kroll back in the pocket, seven. Triangle consists of the two, four, five. McPhee goes right, gets four, leaving up six. Four horsemen in front, the one, two, four. Behind the one is the five. Behind the two is the eight. Right side out. Left side and center remain. Matt, a four-time world champion, looking for, his, looking for his fifth. Kroll just missed outside. The wood comes back for the four, but not the two. Imagine making the four or five being an afterthought. One eight leave. It doesn't go too often like that. Pretty when it does. Brian doinks it for a nine. 46 through four in the third. And final string of the match, maybe. Matt McPhee sails right for an eight. Whoops. Fours a wild, 44 through four. The lead is 17 for A-plus accounting in the match. The marks are two to one in their favor also. A significant but not conclusive advantage. Jerry Dunn for A-plus accounting on lane 13 on the left, on the right. Tim triple stark Jowlett in the first string. Could use one here. Right out of the hand. One, two, four, nine, not a bad leap. He's got wood in back to possibly help that sleeper pin, they call it, in the back. Jerry, three 200s plus in his career. Recent 209 is a 206 and a 209 as well as a 214 he got. 120 league bowler, 132 is best season ending average. He has a 4-2 split. Jalbert for a spare, looks good. He got yes. it! The wood slides into the nine. 30 in the ball through three. Trying to cut the single digits. The marks are even two apiece though. Good shot. Yeah, talk about a pro shot, a clutch shot. Done for a tough leave. Shots off the three pin, ouch. One in the middle, four, seven left. Right side, six right, nine left and back. Quiet here all of a sudden. Object pin two for a seven. 27 through three. Tim gains three immediately with that mark. So it seems a 14 pin advantage for A plus accounting with two marks on each side. If the marks fizzle, of course, it could be significantly different. 
if it's not filled as well as hoped. Calvert hooks it left. Mm. Just four. Calvert is losing the range on the head pin, and he gets punished, I'm afraid. 34 through three, cuts to 10 right now by the Donna Mark. Jerry Dunn, beautiful shot for a strike, it's eight. That looked good, that looked like a strike there. Seven left, eight right, see if he can use that wood somehow to kick over. Jalba trying to work out of it, looks right that time, one, two, five remaining. Dunn with a for a spare, right behind the seven goes the wood and the ball. Seven for Tim Jalbert, 41 through four. Jerry gets a nine, 36 through four. Greg, substitution policy again for our viewers at home watching. Hmm, substitutions can be made before the halfway point in a string and not on a mark. So before the sixth box is okay. The lead is 12 for A plus accounting. <coughs> Excuse me, two marks to one. There's a strike for Chris Merrill. Back on his game after a tough start, 14 through two. 24 plus two through three. You don't win the Easter Classic, the 20 string competition at Lita Lanes, Nashua, New Hampshire without a little bit of resiliency two like Chris Merrill. Two years in a row, 2021 and 2022, the tornado, Tim Douglas won it this year. Harnett, for Westbury, not in the wheel, it's fair. The Kimrowski special, Millis is called. <laughs> 28 in the ball through three here in the final string of this championship match on Candlepin Bowling Network. Advantage remains with A+. Plus. Merrill, head pin hit. Got to break the right side, goes. 6, 9, 10, triangle, wood to help. Working on a strike. Harnett on the spare, just missed the pocket. Another four spin, a two for one special. Just made it a minute ago. Run it down. 40 through three. Merrill, another spare on strike. 34 through three, 44 in a ball through four. Welcome. After you make up for a slow start. Welcome back to the game. Harnett for another four-horseman pickup. He's got it! Oh yeah. Showing off Rick Kamrowski and Millis Mass. Back-to-back four-horseman spares. He's at 44 through four, half, almost halfway through the final string of the match. Four boxes down, completed. It's an eight-pin lead for A-plus accounting. The marks are three to two for A plus. Paul Grant, Dan Castle, Greg Gouillard on Canopin Bowling Network. Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada, Fairlanes Bowling Center on Canopin Bowling Network World Championship match. Ten thousand dollars to split for the winning team. A strike. <laughs> Sean D and crush the pins on lane fourteen. That's on a spare. Eighty-eight through four. Ninety-eight plus two through five. Wow. That's three strikes in four boxes, right, Greg? Sean Dion. Fry, tough leave, missed outside the head pin. One, four, eight, ten. We've been blessed to see so much talent here this week and tons of double strikes, some triple strikes, some clutch shots. Fry, big out, gets two for an eight. 54 half. And will he stay? He is staying on. Nope, those arrows are incorrect. That's it. Cole Fry, 22 years young, bright future. He is up to 20 now for a heat plus accounting. D on a strike again for another double. Spread Eagle, ouch, back to reality. A cruel game sometimes. Oh boy. Two, four, seven left, right side, three, six, ten, a 1% average pro success rate without wood. Statistics by Candlepin Bowling Network. I think Fry had a seven box last. I'm correcting to 53 half. That's what I see up there. <coughs> for another mark, tough leave. Oh, he almost pulled it off. What a shot. That sticks on the strike, though. He's still in the zone. Eight on the fill, 106 half. 106. 
Fry, good shot, will it go? No. Well, we'll try to roll back, but it goes the other way. I was hoping it would bounce off that lip, but it goes into the channel. Sean gets a nine, back to earth. For now. 115 through six, what a performance off the bench last string. Sean Dion, 115 through six, Cole Fry, 63 through six. 28 pin lead for A-plus accounting, looking for the fifth world title. Two marks for each side, both here on spares. Nate LeBlanc, 44 to ball. Jason Doucette, 16 to ball. Strike on spare, wow! Holy moly! 54 through four, 64 plus two through five. Doucette's turn. He gets eight. Wood turns around. Three six spare chance. 68 through four. Slight tap on the six. Imagine that being an afterthought, 68 through four. That's tremendous. Front of the mark. Splits the upright. Spare. 78 in the ball through five. What a battle here in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Double guns. Four marks in this half. The World Championships on Canopin Bowling Network. Nothing like the great game of Canopin Bowling. Get your friends out, folks. Have a blast. Join a league. Good exercise. A sport for all ages. Canopin Bowling. Pocket shot for LeBlanc, five. That's the bucket they call it, the bucket they call it in Canada. Some call it the hay bill or the diamond plus the seven, if you will. First ball on the strike. Two sets, spare fill. Look at this, Red Eagle plus the five. Three on the fill, 81 half. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Just missed that spare and strike for LeBlanc. 73 half. Amazing. Now he trusted the five, a clean spread eagle. Brutal. A plus a 36 in the match. Prime may be on a 65 half. Thanks, Justin. Justin Scally works with us. Thanks, Justin, for the feedback. I think. Eyes and ears. Yeah, now the, now the projector's coming to focus. I think it's 65 half. Yeah, we can't see the score, but completely, we're way back further than we usually are as LeBlanc gets a 9, 82 through 6. Jason Doucette, a 7, 88 through 6. One mark for each bowl of the anchor bowlers. The lead is A plus accounting by 39. And they're down, what, 40 or 50 or so in the first, right? Which is a blip uh, in any of these matches. Yeah, 40, 44 was the Fenway advantage. Both balls. Then it's zero, then it's 40 the other way. Both balls looking for the mark here. Crossing over, eight, five in the seven. Wood coming back. Let the record show I had that score right the first time. And one more rolling back and forth like a pendulum. Brian Kroll for Ooh. a strike, seven. That looks good, doesn't it? Fun to watch. Yeah, Kroll's had a few quality head pit hits. Just a couple. Just a few. <laughs> just, a, just fun to watch. Just his mechanics, his delivery, his rotation. Steady Eddie throughout the decades. The way he hugs that ball to the shoulder. Mm. Try to go right in that wood, had the right idea, just missed it too far right. So yeah. We saw Nate play that vertical piece of wood before, Matt almost replicating a similar shot. Different angle this time, though it was a little more slightly angled in his favor. But good try anyway. And Evan Ryber the coaching up Brian Kroll on this shot. Could tip the wood, it's tough to scoot around it. Let's see how he plays it. This is for a spare. He goes left, he got it. Ah, clever. 56 half plus one. I know he wants this one really bad. And there it goes now, the Paul Grant special. Missed the second shot completely, making the third, 10. Matt McPhee, 54 half. One incredible match, folks. This is why you gotta love Canopin Bowling. Get the youth involved. The future is bright. Get the youth involved. Let's build this sport up. Consider the experience of these guys. No better time to start than now. Youth tournament at Portsmouth Volorama today. Over 80 bowls, Academy Lanes, Pub 125 representing or so. McPhee, 3 2 split. Kroll, a rare three. Make it Tip. four, make it five. Tip. Got a break. 
And it's that Canadian bucket, they call it, the bucket lead, the hay bale, the diamond plus the seven. He's got three pieces to deal with, though. And it could be a roadblock. Call it what you want. 61 half. You do karaoke, Greg? Mm-mm. Trying to kick it over. Oh, he got it! Oh, oh what a shot! What? Yeah, XV. Are you serious? 64 and a ball through six. Kroll! Refs around the five. No! Ben and ball going this way and that for Kroll. Wow. <laughs> and Matt with much fewer resources, the dreaded parallel pins. Mercy. What was wrong with that shot with Brian Kroll? Wow. Matt McPhee, remember he had a 114 and a 136 before. Follow the Friday Night Pro League game of the week every Friday night during the regular bowling season, 35 matches plus the playoffs, live on Facebook, rebroadcast on YouTube, Canopton Bowling Network, Friday Night Pro League game of the week. Returns next Friday, Brian to nine. It'll be Central 2, Rich Lamoni, Central 2, taking on Dave Barber, Jeff Surrett's Extra Lanes, number one versus number three, I believe, of four. And if you'd like to join us for continuing 2023 World's coverage, forget it. <laughs> It's going to be a fun ride home back to Massachusetts. <laughs> Sorry, Rod Roddy. No, we're having a good time here. Great job, Greg. Class act, great guy. Great to work with you again, as always. 35 pin lead for A plus accounting. The marks are 2 to 1 for A plus. But do subscribe on YouTube for other great bowling content. <laughs> the soothing sounds of Greg Gouya. Pocket shot, 9. Jerry Dunn trying to push the 5 down. Tim Jalbert on the head pin, a 2 2 split. 3-6 right, 4-7 left. Two Pro Series titles for J Jim Jalbert, lost to his friend Jimbo Ayotte. Again, Jim the Pro Bowl of the year last year. Last season. Jerry Dunn, no problem, spare. 46 half plus one for the veteran bowler. Jalbert goes too far right, goes Ooh. back for the three, but leaves up the 4-7. Yeah, the pins might matter, spelled an extra. Pinning is 10 in favor of A-plus accounting now. That's opened up a bit. Nice 10 for Tim. 51 half. Jerry Dunn has got involved with YBC Youth Bowling. He has three 200 games, four world titles, averaging at least 132 in each of those world titles <coughs> using 2.6 Cobra bowling balls out of Bible Hill Bowlicade. Nova Scotia. Left-hander. One, two, four, spare chance on the spare, 53 half. Lead is 42 now for A plus here in the third. Jalbert with the 470 triangle would possibly in the way. Jerry's high triple 480, high 5715. Another mark. Missed the head pin. Jalba's chance for a spare. Missed left, four in the eight. Done, 10, 63 through six. Jalbert, nine on the object pin, 60 through six at the minimum. Chris Merrill on the left from Maine. Better Matt than Harnett from Canada. Better than being below minimum, though. Four bonus pins, and, his, and Tim Jalbert has clung onto a lot of them. Matt pulls a Heather Lane's lower Sackville. Beautiful shot, eight, four in the seven. Merrill goes right, has the one, two, six, ten. The six goes, maybe the ten goes, six does not. So it's one, two, six. Both on spares, so Chris 51 half, Matt Harnett 52 half. A plus inches the lead to 44 with one mark in favor. Oh, for yeah. Them. For another mark, no. Whoops. What foils are now? Nice shot, spare. Three Not in a row. Easy one. Three in a row. 61 of the ball through five. Chris Merrill cooking it up. In the channel nine for Harnett, 61 half. Who was denied three in a row. 
Chris, part of the U.S. Invitationals with Bolobal Mafia, lost to Josh Daly and Tim Otero's Chryslewood Flooring. Three, eight, three straight years, he won the Main State Doubles Tournament. Won the ICBA recently as well at the Big 20 in Scarborough, Maine. 2019 Main State Open Championship as well. Merrill on the field, just three, 64 half. It is 40 for A+. plus. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like by hitting that thumbs up button you see on the platform. We appreciate it and the bowlers appreciate it. But either way, thank you so much for your support just by watching. The anchor ball of Matt Harnett. Good ball. Wobbling 9 and 10. Wrong Merrill, way. You know, not, almost went for a spare. You fell the wrong way, stupid. <laughs> Merrill, the 8 and 10. And Matt Harnett, 10, 71 through 6. Chris Merrill, 9. Out of Stars and Strikes, South Harris, Maine. Russ Lee Jr. in Jody Neely's house, 73 through 6. Russ Sr. in the Candlepin Bowling Hall of Fame. And Russ Neely, another great guy, great owner in Candlepin Bowling in that 14-lane facility. Let's have a look here. Oops, let's not do it this way. Let's do it this way. Right now it is currently uh, four extra marks for A-plus accounting. That's uh, not... Uh, but 11 pins also in the pinning in their favor. Back to the top of the order. Cole Fry, strike! 72 plus two through seven. Bombs away, baby. Sean Dean on fire, 115 through six. Drops eight, Whoa. wiggle on the two and the 10 on the right. Wiggling two. And the wood's not going to terribly help. If only it was red line, just laser beaming the two and 10. Not so lucky, but. He didn't come into almost the middle part of the second string. And what a replacement that has been. For a spare, no. Mm. Any consideration to the lower part of the wood? Hard to say. It's one for a nine, 124 through seven. Still a 40 pin lead for A plus accounting. One mark for each side. Can Fenway Academy come back and win their first championship in three tries? Colfire would love a double here. It looks good. Oh. And he just missed the six for a double. Sometimes the pins just aren't set for you. Explosive delivery. Goodness. Dion goes right, one, two, four in front. The right is the six and 10, would behind the two. Come on, everyone else has been getting doubles. Why not me? Fry for the mark, missed ooh, it. Ooh, ooh, that ooh, hurts. Ooh, ooh, Nine ooh. in the strike though, 81 through seven. Cold comfort, I think. Dion, oh wow, what a shot for a spare. Sean. One, two, four, six, 10. How about that folks? 134 and a ball through eight. Sean Dion. 90 through eight for Cole Fry in the nine. It's a 32 pin lead for A plus accounting plus two marks to none. On Candlepin Bowling Network, the finals of the 2023 men's ICC World Championship from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at Fairlanes. The Substitute. Was the movie called The Substitute? Yes, there was. Mm hmm. Chase Musette floating with a strike, wobbling triangle, 6 9 10. Nate LeBlanc, or LeBlanc. Mm hmm. Or LeBlanc. LeBlanc. You go with LeBlanc. Mm hmm. He said either way is fine. Doucette's fair. Five marks. And what a try that was. Whoa. Left, the, left the corner. Won the singles knockout here Monday. 10 box, 92 through seven. Good to keep it on the lane. A ball in the gutter would stay in the gutter. Not that time. A plus a count in the lead in the match by 32 pins, two marks to one in their favor. Two set, right in the pocket, nine. Same spot, the king for a five, I got a tap. 
Wiggles but holds his ground. And 107 through seven. LeBlanc, four left, eight right, going for a spare on lane 13. And back to lane 14, Jason Doucette, clean shot at the five. Unlikely the wood. Right now. on it. 117 of the ball through eight. Six. What a match. Six marks, Jason Doucette. LeBlanc leads up the four for a 10. 10 it is. No, 102 through eight. Oh, great. All the kids are going to be bowling off their same hand, same foot now. They're just down to 23 for A-plus, where they have two marks to one in their favor. Brian Kroll, 70 through 6. Matt McPhee's on a spare to the left on lane 13, 64 in a ball. If this match turns, Jason Doucette is a big reason why. Kroll, thin hit left, 3. Chris Merrill's resurgence likewise. In the pocket, off the wall, eight, three right, seven left, on the spare. Uh, so, yep, three fill for, a uh, three fill rather. No, no, sorry, I'm, I'm, wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And this is Augusta Main Special, I call it the 1710 Sports Center for Brian Carroll. Excuse me, I'm wrong, 72 through six. Ooh. Good bid there, can't get to the seven, so eight in that fill, 72 through six for Matt McPhee. For the Memberton Lanes. Brian, nine, 10 to McPhee. Brian, 80 through seven. Matt, uh, yeah. 82 through seven. Unofficially. 79 through seven, should be. 79, okay, thank you. 79 through seven, thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. 32 pin lead for A-plus accounting. One mark for each side. Teamwork ball. We got this. That's right. Eyes and ears. Roll, crossing over, seven, another triangle. This time it's the six, nine, 10. Oh, come back, Wood. Yikes. McPhee in the pocket. Nine. Please. Two pin holds up. Mm. I don't root for either team. I just root against the pins. He threw a 463 trip on the Worlds before in the past. Kroll's ball should be able to take this. He does throw it left to right. It could trip on the Wood. Could use it. Got it. Phew. Slid back. It's there. It's a good shot. Nerf. And he got the return of the ball. You could say a ball return spare. Timber. Unbelievable. 89 through eight for Brian. 92 to the ball through eight for Matt McPhee. The perfect response. Crazy shots here all weekend long. All week long, I should say. It feels like a Sunday. Unbelievable spare. Take it while you can, folks. Makes it for all those roadblocks. 32 pin lead still for A+. Plus. Two marks apiece. Fourth bowlers. Tim Jalbert for Fenway Academy. Crossing over, he gets seven. Ugh. Six, 10 right, seven left. Tough leave. Ballyhooed his head pin accuracy, and then following that, and he got three straight. Left handed Jerry Dunn. That's the thanks he gets. Missed right, 5 2 split. Dunn's put some explosive strings together. He's got a lot of fire in his belly still. He's still bowling at a high level. 41st year of Kenneth from bowling. The way you've put it, I was going to suggest an antacid. But no, no, Jerry Dunn's got that competitive fire, exactly like you're saying. It's like the Bobby Witt of Maine, you could say, in a lot of ways. Mm. Left-hander for him, though. Leaves up the four. Good try there. That's fair. Jalbert field goal for an eight, 68 through seven. Dunn, 10, 73 through seven. Inches lead up to 34 in the match for A+. Plus. Marks are even, two apiece. Strap in, folks. This match started with one pin. Uh, this string started with a one pin difference. A plus seems favored, but it can change in the blink of an eye. Many of you know that. A post plus the eight for Jalbert. Jerry Dunn. Right in the pocket, up the walls, 9, 10, strike! 83 plus 2 through 8 here in the third and final string of the match. Unless we have overtime. Jalbert just missed number one, oh. it comes back! Illegal block in the back, spare! Throw the flag! 
He'll take it. I got one, you get one. 78 the ball through eight. Even Steven, you could say. Crazy game, isn't it? The thrills and spills. 34 pin lead for A plus. Chris Merrill, 73 through six. Mark, Matt Harnett, 71 through six. Had to put it for Matt, 2-2 two -two split. The 6-10 on the right, a plank in front, 2-4 left. Merrill off the wall, can't get the 4-7 to go. Harnett just, Harnett just missed inside. Not Merrill far off. Gain, gets a 10. Picking sticks might matter later, but then what A needs marks now. Gains two there as Matt gets an eight, trims the lead back to 32. So still in it, three marks apiece. Pinning anyone's game, anyone's match, anyone's title. Two extra marks for A plus accounting and 12 pins. So effectively, a two extra marks worth for A plus accounting. The top baller at Stars and Strikes in South Paris, Maine, Chris Merrill. Splat. Too bad. 3 6 right, 4 7 left. Jeff Lapierre also right there with him. And others as well. One of the top balls in Maine for sure. Harnett half west to the two and the eight. Trying to kick it over. Hit the object pin, the three. Harnett, good bid, all but the kingpin, the five. Merrill gets one for an eight, 91 through eight. Gains the two back, Matt Harnett, 89 through eight. Not his best stop, but his team has the lead by 34. Two boxes to go in this championship match for each bowler. The marks are three to three. Paul Grant, Dan Castle, Greg Gouillard on Candlepin Bowling Network, the men's ICC World Teams Championship match on Candlepin Bowling Network. Please follow us on YouTube and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button. Never cost you a penny. Sean Dion, 134 and a ball. Seven, eight, six and a ten. Spare chance, 142 through eight. Cole Fry, 90 through eight. Need some marks. Spread Eagle plus the five. That's not going to be easy. Dion for another one. He got it. Of course he did. Unstoppable. 152 on the ball in the ninth. Fry, good try. Got four of the seven. The dream coming true. This match is not over yet. Fry, eight. 98 through nine. Three marks apiece. Lead us up to 44 for A+. Plus. Trying to win the fifth team championship title. Is that right? Dion crossing over, eight more. Three right, five left, 160. 160 through nine. Fry delivers six, seven. Tough break, four, seven, ten. Then we had the lead in the first. A plus cut the one after two and taking control here in the third. Fry is at 101 through nine. Dion. Another mark, missed that time. Oh. Trying to get to 170. Having a heck of a string and still disappointed. He's a 204 high mm -hmm. single overall. His parents were bowlers, 2017 world champ with Kingswood. In a moment like this, the team comes first. This would be a second title if they can hang on. Bry's last try. try. Good bid. Whoa, missed the four, but not by much anymore. And he gets that chance for a thin, skinny slice. Dion nine, denied the 170, but nothing wrong with the 169. Final string championship performance by Sean Dion for A-plus accounting, an A-plus performance from Dion. Cole Fry ends up with a 110 final string. A 111 even? Okay. 110 is it? 
111. I see 111 on the board. Okay. Excuse me, folks. So he just 48 for A plus accounting. I'm confirming everything else at the breakneck speed here, but I believe all other scores are correct. Another strike. Blake, you said singles knockout championship winner Monday. Uh, LeBlanc. Yeah. Le LeBlanc, rather. LeBlanc, rather. Oh, you're wiggling. Doucette drops nine. LeBlanc. Yeah, Nate LeBlanc. Fourth mark. Doucette. Big strike. There. There's still a chance. Uphill battle. Because of Jason. I show all the other scores is correct, or so help me. On the bonus, six. First ball on the strike. Two sets, Phil, is four. One, 40 through nine. This would be a shot. Ooh. Seven of the strike, 119 through nine for Nat LeBlanc. What a shot, what a spare. What a performance by Jason Doucette. 150 in a ball on the 10th. Eight for Nate LeBlanc, 127. Final string, lead is 40 for A plus. Three marks to two for Fenway. They're gonna need a double strike or two, more than likely. Try to get to 160 with a strike. Mm. It'll get five, 155. Five performance for the 117 league bowler. Jason Doucette for Fenway Academy. Crowd gives a great hand here in Moncton at Fairlanes. 35 pin lead for A plus. Trying to hold on. Two marks apiece. Both on spares, Brian Kroll, Matt McPhee. Oh, hang on, now what? Is this, has, has Fry's string been directed back to a 110? Okay. So it, it was 110, so we had it right the first time, okay. All righty. 36 pin lead for A+. Plus. It was corrected on the projector. And a lemon drop for the second time. He had one a double strike earlier. 93 through eight, good news for Family Academy. I'm just stressed, don't mind me. Brian I didn't mean Cole, to disparage anyone. Ball. Spear fill is Roll, seven, roll, maybe? roll. It's six. Ooh. 95 through eight. Lead us down to 31. For eight plus. Second ball goes left. One, three, ten for McPhee. Kroll, nice shot. Oh. Take it to the ten. Ten. And that wolf is rolling over. The, the other one got in the way. Possible chance for a spare. Fall short. Advantage still firmly with A-plus accounting. Audrey Penn comes back for the 10, leads up the three for a nine box. 102 through nine for Matt. Brian Kroll a nine, 104 through nine. Five boxes to go. A plus has control right now. 31 pins is the lead in an outstanding match. Amazing strings, amazing, amazing multi-strike combos. Only two marks different. Also 11 pins for A-plus accounting. 4, 7, 10 for Matt McPhee. Brian Quill could use a mark. In the pocket, triangle, 2, 4, 5. Got to get, get some marks going here. Get it working. It wouldn't be worlds without constant encouragement and yelling. A piece of wood. Got the 10 somehow, not the 7. Candlepin chants are an art form unto themselves. Brian Kroll up the wall, spare! Oh, yes. Still have a chance. 114, the ball in the 10th. Another wall shot for Kroll. Good one. Four marks. Nine for McPhee. 111, final string. Right now the lead is 30, two marks to one. 
A strike to cut at the 20 with four boxes to go. Roll on the spare, eight, cuts Job. to 22. Job done. 122, final string for Brian Kroll. His totals, Greg, for the, the, the bowl is three strings. You could, please. Right now we have, uh, it's currently, uh, Jason just said finished highest with 386. Brian Kroll, 359. Cole Fry, 341. Sean Dion, 379, although that was for the player slot. Uh, Matt McPhee, 361. Thank you, Greg. Four boxes to go, both on spares. Final four boxes, unless we have overtime, a full one-string rollout until someone wins. $10,000 to the winner, 5000 expected for the runner-ups, plus the championship trophy and the presentation next on Camelton Bowling Network. Jerry Dunn on a strike. First ball, seven, eight maybe. It's seven, one, two, rearrange four. Tim Jalvin on a spare, head pin hit eight. Three in the five. 86 through eight. Second part of the strike, Phil, for Jerry Dunn. Big sticks. Okay. Miss left. It's a fine shot, though. 92 through eight. It is 23 for A+. Plus. Big spare for Jalbert. 96 in the ball through nine. Jerry Dunn played a good defensive shot there, but here comes Jalbert. The only, the only mark on the board for either side. Jerry Dunn, 10. Speaking of defense, hasn't lost a pin for the past five boxes, Jerry. 102 through nine for Jerry Dunn. Three boxes to go. It's a 23 pin lead. Cut it to the teens as low as 13. A lot of spectators looking at my screen. Chris Merrill will need a, a double strike or at least two spares with high fills pending. What Matt Harnett does next. Five two split. He wanted it to be loud at the other end. Jalbert on the spare, drills the pocket, seven. Cuts to the 16. 103 through nine. Tough leave though. Has to go east coast to west coast of that wood. This would be pretty if it went two. Not going away. He's frustrated with that shot. 4 2 split. For another spare. Off the wall. He got it. Wow, what a shot. Clutch, clutch, clutch. Tim Jalbert from Academy Lanes. Pub 125, Haverhill, Mass. How about that? 113 in the ball on the 10th. Down to 5. Was there ever any wow, doubt? Wow, here we go, folks. Now do you believe? 107 for Jerry Dunn. Frustrating 5. It's down to 11. Oh, boy. A strike to cut it to 1. Yep. Nothing like the great game of Candleton Bowling, folks. This is what it's all about. Are you not entertained? Big Phil crossing over up the wall. Eight, nine. It's a two pin lead. 122 for Tim Jabbin. Jim and Jim comes through big. A triple strike in the first. It's a two pin lead. Two boxes to go on the championship match, maybe. Overtime if we tie. Nine. A plus up by two. Let's double check the math if we can. It is confirmed, two pins. Both not on marks. Both struggling this string. Harnett goes right, just four. Chris Merrill on the nose, seven, three, six right, seven left, not gonna be easy. He's got a wood piece of wood to work with possibly. And this bundle of six is not easy. Seven plus 107 is 514, is it? Harnett missed right, that hurts. Merrill tried to kick it over, just missed right, but not by much. Oh my goodness. It's gonna come down to pinning, possibly. Edge of your seat thriller, instant classic. Harnett, big out. Six, we're tied. Merrill gives a one pin lead. That's where it was, going to the third. 
Fenway Academy returns to a one pin lead. One box to go in this championship match on Caliph and Bowling Network. What a battle, what a match. That's 407 and 107, that's 514, is it not on the right side? 407 and 107 is 514. What was that? Harnett needs a mark, possibly seven. Not gonna be easy, four so left, 310 right. So my score is right. Merrill, fourth and right, the one, three, six, 10. Pete Candlepin Bowling Network get the score right by all costs. 514 is correct. For the first four, 507. Harnett for a spare. He got it! What a shot for a spare! Clutch, clutch, clutch! 105 to ball. Merrill needs it. He gets it! It's coming down to the final ball! Unbelievable! Wow! History in the making, folks, a one pin lead for Fenway. It's coming down to one ball each, or overtime, possibly. Nothing like the great game of Caleb and Bowling, folks. How about this? Arnett on the bonus, in the pocket. Six, seven. Six to tie. Seven to win for the title. He goes right to No! Him. And Fenway falls short for the third time. A plus hangs on to win the championship. Unbelievable finish. A tough break for Chris Merrill and Fenway Academy. What a battle. Unbelievable. Stay tuned for the championship presentation, the interviews. 626 to 621. That is confirmed. Let's put that on the board, baby. Five-pin win. Four pins. Four-pin win. A plus wins by four. Five in the string. Fenway had one going in. That's how you have it. Delbert spares off the board, of course. Wow, wow, wow. And a round of applause from the Fairlanes Moncton New Brunswick crowd. Here's the totals. Take a look at this. I'd get down there if I were you. Do not disconnect this cable, whatever you do. Just Watch me make sure it's all set. Go out that, go out that way and do it. Can you test the mic on the way over? Yep. Test one, two. <laughs> Team photo first, Paul. Stop. Playing traffic cop along the way. What a match. A plus accounting the champions. We'll be with you with an interview in just a moment. Stay tuned for the, the championship presentation on Canop and Bowling Network. A dramatic finish. Goes to the Canadian team. Their fifth team championship win. A plus accounting. A heartbreak loss for Fenway Academy by four pins.
All right, Matt Harnack, congratulations, man, you did it? We did it. You bought that wild shirt when you were struggling and you won a championship. You gotta buy a bunch of wild shirts now. And you got the hair down. I, I, I bought a wild shirt early in the week and you, uh, you said it'd be good ever since. And I think we got a big W today. Five time wow. champion, three letter word. Crazy, wow. Wow. How, how big was Sean Dion on that third string? Dion came in, he locked some, he locked a, you know, I want, I want to swear, I almost swore, I'm not going to swear, but he came in when we needed him and showed up, dropped a couple big bombs, and that's what makes A plus, A plus. We're a team. We all work together and we help each other out when we're struggling, and that's what happened today. And Congratulations. We got Congratulations. Let's bring some other folks here if yeah. you can, please. Let's bring uh, Jerry Dunn. Jerry Dunn. Corkum. Corkum's first one. Never got it yet. Bring him up. Come on over. It's his first one. Congratulations, your first win. Yeah, it feels great, man. Here too. Show I do, your, yeah. Your, your yeah. wife and daughter, Brielle. show it. What's your name? Brielle. What is it? Brielle. Okay. Brielle. How do you spell that? B-R-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. right, look at the camera there. Wait to the camera. See the camera up there? <laughs> feels great, Paul. Awesome feeling now, right? Very good. <laughs> worth, the, worth the trip here, for sure. Yeah, Congratulations. Awesome. Three-letter word for winning the world championship. Three-letter word, man. I can't even. Wow, we're going to go with wow. I'm going to work yeah. on you. <laughs> <laughs> like with a wow. All right, all right, let's bring in some more. Bring the trophy. Awesome. Bring in the trophy here, buddy. <laughs> you want to take a picture of those two here? I do, yeah. Let's get on camera, girls. All right. Congratulations. We'll step aside for a second here. All right, Cork, thank you very much. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Let the party begin. <laughs> bring in Jerry Dunn. Jerry Dunn. No strange to World Championships, number five, right? That's number five, yes, it's very good. We had a very good team, so I'm just proud of my team. They just pulled me out, pulled me out of a, a switch situation, that's all. You go at a very high level. You're so feisty, Lance, you miss a shot. You're so aggravated, but you always come back big time. I always try just to concentrate around the middle, and then if I can, just try and get near the head pin, and whatever happens, happens. I never like to get too pissed off. I, I do get a little peeved once in a while, but I make up for it in the end. Congratulations, three letter word for winning the championship. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Paul. Okay, anybody else here? All right, let's send it back to Greg. Thank you for watching this great game of Canada from Bowling on Canada from Bowling Network. The championship winner, 2023 Men's Worlds ICC, belongs to none other than A plus accounting. A plus, baby! Back to Greg Gouya to wrap it up. Congratulations, I'll take the level out here. Congratulations to A-plus accounting. Commiserations to Fenway Academy. A tremendous finals match for a tremendous week of bowling here at Fairlanes Bowling Center, Moncton, New Brunswick. On behalf of everyone here at Candlepin Bowling Network, that was Paul Grant we, with Dan Castle, remotely Bob Lee, our executive producer. My name is Greg Gouillard. Thank you very much for watching this presentation of Candlepin Bowling Network and the International Candlepin Championship. Please make sure to like and subscribe on Facebook and YouTube so you're always in the know about all our future bowling content. And until next time, so long.